Welcome. Welcome, everybody. It is 2 p.m. Central Time, the new time for the Sunday show on what is today? May 14th, 2023. May the 14th be with you. That's not a meme. Uh, and welcome to the Sunday show where we take calls on spirituality, theism, religious experience, religious belief, religious deconstruction, all things religious from the perspective of a couple of atheists, skeptics, and humanists. I'm Jimmy Snow, joined today by, as every Sunday, uh, by Matt Dillahunty. Matt, how are you? I'm here. Uh, Daba D. And, and seemingly on time, despite all of my attempts to not be on time. I think that was almost my fault. I, I realized, uh, like, in 45 minutes ago or an hour ago or so, I was like, you know, I don't know if we've brought up the time change since last Sunday. Uh, so luckily I thought of it in it, it with enough time in advance to both message you and Arden, but we're good. We're here. We're early. We're spry. I don't think that's true for either of us. I actually think both of us no. are, are feeling a little under the weather, but spry is only a word used to describe old people. Is that so true? I, I can't, when have you ever heard spry been used to, descri to describe somebody young and virile just now when I described myself? Uh, but not oh, you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fair. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. That, that's fair. <laughs> the lines are open. 720-619-2288. There is also a web link in the description for anybody who might like to call uh, from an international place or whatever, if you want to call from internally as well. We will get started on calls very soon. Quick couple of announcements. Uh, this week we will be launching the thing I've talked about in the past, the algorithm army. If you want to be a part of that, a sort of, uh, uh, a group of people who helps us get more information, more places, helps us manipulate, uh, our way into some news feeds, uh, and, and increase our rankings in some place. If you want to be a part of that, just go to qnaline.com. The website is in the uh, description or email contact at qnaline.com and make sure that you put in the subject line algorithm army right now when you go to qnaline.com the only thing you come to is a contact page so you can use either one uh however that the website will also be expanding another couple exciting announcements uh we'll do future week show announcements later in the show but uh later this month we are launching two new debate shows the first one is N Boss? Uh, is are we just calling it N Boss, or is it? Do we want a longer title? I don't know. I, I don't know. Right now, N Boss is is what's been in my head the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, it might be. It's it, and because it started because of a discussion about how um, apologists quite often act as if I'm some kind of end boss. You know, yeah, it's like oh, instead of debating the subject or whatever else. They, I need to take down Dillahunty. And I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Which, you know, you can call in any week, but for the people who feel like uh, like you're not being treated fairly on a call-in show because we can mute you, uh, because you know, which we do for clarity. We let people talk for days. But for anybody who who's like, oh, no, no, I want something that's more closer to a, a real debate. Uh, I have come up with a format for a one-hour show, which will almost always run a little bit over just get used to it but you target an hour where you get to uh submit your name along with your topic a couple definitions and say you'd like to face the end boss and by the way the end boss is not always me probably will be most of the time for a while because that's just how we run um but if you were to face you know if you wanted to debate some psychological issue shannon might be the end boss if you were to going to debate some evolutionary issue maybe you get forest as the end boss if you're going to debate a trans issue maybe you get katie or arden uh, as the end boss generally uh, maybe you, you want to call in and you uh, you don't want to face me but maybe you're going to face jimmy on some sort of uh, atheist skeptical thing whatever but the key is a brief introduction describing the format and then you, as the contestant, get a 10-minute uh, period to present your case. That is followed up by 30 minutes of questions from the audience directed to you, the contestant. Um, the end boss will just be here to steer during that 30-minute period. And then there will be a 10-minute period after that where the end boss directs questions at you. So you're basically kind of presenting your case and running a gauntlet of questions that end with the end boss 
and then a uh, the end boss after the, the the question period is going to give a brief summation of things and then you're going to get the last word well you may not get the technical last word but you get to close last and then we might say something like thanks for tuning in to end boss we'll see you again next week or in two weeks when it's so and so and also between your 10 minute opening and when we actually start questions there's a brief two or three minute period there where for the purposes of clarity, the end boss asks just definitional questions and tries to steel man your position. So it's introduction, you present your case for 10 minutes, then the end boss steel mans it to make sure that we're understanding correctly. Let me understand this right. You're saying that contingency arguments, the fact that the universe in your view is contingent, necessarily means that there is some God behind it, whatever it else. And as soon as we steel man that and get verification of it, then it's questions from the audience, then it's questions from the end boss, then it's closing statements, and we move on. Instead of it being a a standard debate where two people are presenting and two people are dueling, it is everyone gets to get involved. Here's the questions that that the audience thinks are 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 best by and large, although with some curating by the end boss. Um, and so yeah, that's that's what we've got going on. Very cool. And then also, probably also this month, probably the weekend after the end boss uh, launch, but possibly not also, it, but soon we'll be launching a new show called Duologues, uh, which will be a more recognizable format because it'll be quite similar to like what Matt and I are doing here today, except for that sitting across from, uh, you know, it would be myself and someone I disagree with or Matt and someone uh, he disagrees with. But then there will be a new structure of timers where, uh, my interest was, I, I I think I've complained enough about debate shows, sometimes specific debate shows on this channel that people know the general format I find utterly a, uninteresting. Uh, and we wanted to do different stuff over here. And so the the thing that I like about uh, Dual Logs is Dual Logs is more focused on the consequences of holding a certain position. Uh, so if I am taking calls across from a Mormon and a person is calling in, they call in with a question for me. I have a certain amount of time to respond to that question. And then the Mormon gets a type certain amount of time to respond to the same question. Uh, and then, or, or vice versa. Uh, and I like that, that to me is just wholly a way more interesting concept than two people having a proposition that they're battling over. And I, I, I don't know, online debate has just been ruined for me. So we're trying to do it's something one special. Of the reasons why you know, I'll, I'll, I will continue to do debates, and you can look at Enboss as if it is a miniature debate, but it's it's basically one person running a gauntlet. And so, if you feel whether you're a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Scientologist, uh, a Wiccan, a pagan, uh, whatever your particular belief is that you think somebody over here is is not going to agree with, or that you're not getting enough attention for, this yep. is a platform. I mean, you can call into the Sunday show, and you should. Uh, by the way, one of the best ways to see that you to to make sure that you get your spot and your time on Inboss is to call into the Sunday show, present something, and let people know. Yeah, I'm I'm serious, and I can make a case, and I can talk on topic. Um, and you know, hey, we didn't we didn't really interact as well there because of delay or I just didn't get enough time to talk or whatever else, but I can, you know, do better. Boom. You submit. Uh, and by the way, do we have a link to that for people to submit? Yeah. Right. Right now, uh, Q and a line.com as well, if you needed to do it today, but again, sometime later this week, we'll have application forms that more well, uh, request all the information we're suggesting. I'd say by tomorrow, yep. but it, it was going to be yesterday and ended up troubleshooting a different tech issue we had for hours. Yeah, and I've got I, I'm I'm really happy that my tech is not having a problem here because I had some issues with my A10 Mini Pro. My green screen looks a little fuzzy on me, uh, but nothing I can do about it right now. So yeah, we'll just suck it up. We get we do have a couple calls. Yeah, we'll get started. Uh, but uh, theist, we definitely no have theist, lines but... open for you. So if you are a theist, you are you believe in uh, you have some sort of religious experience, some sort of metaphysical experience. You have a belief in God. You're a deist, whatever, whatever belief you have in this realm of of theism and atheism, spirituality and the like. Uh, we'd like to hear from you, especially. I remember we had a caller earlier in the week who said they would call back afterwards because at the beginning of their call, I don't remember what show it was on. They had said, "No, I'm not a theist. I'm a deist." And then they never the 
the the host of the caller never got into that. They just went on to the topic. Uh, if if you're watching and and it's you I'm talking about, call in. I'd like to t to discuss that with you as well. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we can get started with whichever call you like. All right. Well, let's start off with Jason Jack in Vermont. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Welcome, Jason. You're on the Sunday show on the line. Hey, let me shut up the speaker on here. Um, I really had a question. I, yeah, I've been listening for, you know, several months now, and the subject uh, has never come up. And I was wondering if uh, either of you are familiar with the book of Urantia. Yes. Um, I have a friend that, that has, I've been friends with him for 20 years and he's really into it. And we get into our, you know, deep discussions <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> uh, so, you know, like I, I have my debates with the whole, you know, like, like cool story, bro. You know, like it's kind of the way it strikes me, but, um, I had never heard you guys talk about the book much. And I was just curious on your general thoughts about it other than, you know, I see no reason to spend any time exactly. talking about the book. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I, I was just, it's one of, I mean, it, it, it you know, it, it's a hundred years old, give or take. Um, it's got some silly stuff on science. It talks about uh, views on God and religion. And uh, it, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's like, we all know almost nobody's ever heard of it. Nobody really follows it. Um, there is there are a handful of uh, acolytes and and people who find it just as significant as they do the writings of Jordan Peterson or whoever else you want to pick. But there's nothing in there that is, uh, for me, of value. There's nothing in there that edifies uh, or enlightens us as to truth. Um, it's one of many books that toss out here's how i think the universe and god's work cool story where's some evidence right yeah that, that's pretty much where our conversations have always ended up and uh uh you know he doesn't really worship it as a religion he just like he's fascinated by the prospect that that this could be how everything is set up and yeah. but he definitely he's a he's a deist in the sense that you know he believes that it's all there's a a grand intelligence and a purpose behind it that we might never understand, but you know, he's, he doesn't you subscribe know to any like traditional religion. Yeah, I'm sorry? All these people who think that there's a grand purpose and an intelligence behind it, that's their bias. There isn't evidence that there's a grand purpose or intelligence behind it. That's right. just what people would really like to believe. Uh, I have, I have downstairs a, a bound copy of the Voynich manuscript, which, um, isn't a religious text nobody knows what it is it may in fact be gibberish um, but i think right. more time more value might come from studying the voynich manuscript and ultimately seeing if it's possible uh to translate it just to see what's in that book than something like you know the urantia book but that's just yeah. me because i like weird shit yeah I just i was raised me, by i was raised Urantia's by a fundamentalist born. pastor yeah, I was raised. I was raised by a fundamentalist pastor, and and uh, by the time I was sixteen, I left home, and I've been carving my own path through life and learning what truth is. And um, you know, it's uh, it, all these years later, it, it's where I stand now is just like whatever's occurring. We're we're participating in this, you know, existence. We are actively participating in it, and I I don't need to know anything beyond that. And, uh, you know, like it's, it's put me in a much better place than in the brainwashed mindset of a fundamentalist, you know, young earth creationist by the book, you know, upbringing. And, uh, so I'm highly skeptical of, you know, anybody's claims because it's, you know, like it's nothing more than just like, okay, that's a nice story. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, can't really, can't really deeply accept too much that, that, you know, can't come to me in a, in a, you know, a way that I can really understand that I can really, you know, um, place any, you know, uh, uh, importance in, I guess. And so that's, that's probably what I expected. 
your response to be towards your answer your book. It was just like something I was curious about. If it's uh, something that you ever did engage with or have other ca- call in people that call in, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I've been asked it. about it. Maybe you know. I've been asked about it maybe four or five times in the last 20 years. Um, if, if there was someone who was an advocate for what's in there, I'd love for them to, to call in and say, Oh, here's what it says. And here's why I think it's true. You know, here's what it says. And here's right. why I think that has value for the world type thing. Um, cause yeah, I, it just seemed like a, like a, like a subject that doesn't get addressed often. It might be interesting to hear 10 minutes of some of this nonsense sometime it might be entertaining for us. But do you, Jason, um, do you anyway, know, that's all I, did you say at the mm-hmm. beginning, you do know somebody who advocates for it? Yeah, well, he, yeah, I don't think he would be the type that would call in. Um, uh, but he, he's like, it's hard to describe. Like, I don't want to really um, uh, place him in a category of somebody who he doesn't worship it and follow it as a religion. He has read it. He, he does advocate for it. He does like he, he gave me a copy of it uh, that I'm sure I have if I looked for it. But um, uh it's it's you know it's it's just it's it's a bizarre tale yeah to say the least. i mean it, it, but, I, but it's if he's not the kind to call in i don't know if if you know you could still send him the show let him know you had this conversation and asked about it that you're interested in hearing conversations about it and see if he knows somebody uh who would want to call in um and discuss it because yeah it's sort of a uh yeah i don't know there's not there's not much to just a bunch of atheists getting around talking about, boy, it sure is interesting that some people might believe in this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see that. Well, I'll see what I can do, and uh, you know, like it was just at least nice to call into the show for the first time, and I love what you guys do. Sure. Um, yeah, and you know, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. And- yeah, uh, I've uh, I, I've got a cu- really good bound copy of the Voynich manuscript that I waited, I don't know, years to get. Oh, look, here it is right near us. So here's, uh, for those who aren't familiar, this is not Urantia, what he was talking about. This is the Voynich manuscript. This is a bound copy, uh, the never deciphered story. And when you get inside of the red box, not all, it's a numbered limited edition and has all kinds of fun stuff uh, related to it. But then there's this, which is the actual bound copy of the Voynich manuscript, which is made to look as much like the original as possible. And so when you open it up, you have it's full of drawings and weird script and it's never been translated. There are people who think it's a hoax um, and there are people who think it's roughly the equivalent of uh, glossolalia where people are just you know spewing forth words. But uh, all kinds of diagrams. It's there's things about plants in here. Uh, there's been suspicions that it's um, some book on witchcraft or maybe a book on medicine or ancient ideas about medicine. Um, I, I don't think it's going to lead to a hidden treasure, but I, when I was a kid and I loved all things weird, yeah, the Urantia book was was weird. The Voynich manuscript, is, this is the one that always won. Like if there was a, a bound collector's edition of, a collector's edition of the Urantia book, uh, I wouldn't waste a minute trying to get it. But the second I found out that there was this limited edition copy of the Voynich manuscript, I was like, that's got to go on the shelf. But, Do you have a, an opinion on it? A, a suspicion on what you think the book is? Um, I don't understand what it could be a hoax for other than maybe somebody wrote up a book specifically uh, to like sell it off as hidden knowledge or whatever. Uh, but no, I, I really don't, I'm not convinced it's a hoax. Uh, I don't know that it's a real language. I think it may be a very, like a personal language in the way that like twins make up their own words and people. Or Tolkien. Who, yeah. And so who knows? Yeah. I just find it really interesting. I wonder if it could even be a Tolkien like thing that it's somebody's book of, it's a guide for a fiction book they were trying to write about a world with which, I don't know. It's very but maybe yeah. it was a, maybe somebody needed a prop for something and the person just really put their time into it like uh like the book uncharmed or um the manuscript from uh, evil dead uh yeah oh yeah all right cool uh well i'm ready for another one you got a preference i do not um 
let me yeah we'll just go ahead and we'll take uh is it lewis or luis in abu dhabi uh, pronouns are he him welcome to the sunday yes, show uh louis louis um hey, louis. yeah uh nice to chat to you guys again i thought i would do you guys the pleasure of saying the words abu dhabi again because i know it jimmy fine. enjoyed it uh, last time um, I have one question, which uh, when I was younger, probably around 16, 17, when I was kind of, I was very involved in the church, many different churches, uh, and there was a time that I kind of realized that something wasn't quite right. I had a lot of questions nobody could answer. And there was one question that I always used to ask. I set up meetings with uh, all the different churches, as priests and pastors and, you know, whatever, and I asked them all these questions. And there was always one question that I used to ask last. And I knew at that time it was kind of a cheap shot because people told me, like, oh, it's a trick question, it's a cheap shot. Why do you ask something like that? But the more I think about it now, I actually thought about it the other day for the first time again, and it's, I think there's more to it than it's just a cheap shot. And the question is, can God create a rock or an object that's too big for him to pick up? And I just wanted to hear your thoughts on, on that kind of a question. Is it a legit question to ask like is it is it a cheap shot or a trick question or is it more of a philosophical thing like in the buddhist you know what's the sound of a one hand clap like some philosophical wrestle no, they have to go it's through not like, it, or it's it, not like a, it's not like a buddhist cone it's an attempt to show that god is illogical and it's doing it based only on this notion of a simplistic god where that can do, that is all powerful but um of course, an all-powerful God, in that silly sense, cannot exist. It's self-contradictory. But most religions and, and theologians don't hold that there's a God that can do absolutely everything. Um, God can do everything that is logically possible. And so, you know, he can't make a married bachelor. He can't make a rock so big that he can't lift it. He can't make a burrito so hot that he can't eat it. Um, none of those glib little things. Of course, God can't do that because God can't do that which is impossible. And so it's not a counter to God proposals unless you're dealing with someone who's incredibly silly and says, yes, my God can do what is logically impossible, in which case now you're talking to an absurdist and you don't need to ask about rocks too too big. You, you, you have someone who doesn't mm -hmm. understand the basics of this. But no modern theologian holds that God can do the logically impossible. They just hold that God is maximally powerful and that God can do anything that can, in fact, be done. And so the question's not going to hold any teeth for any modern theologian, and it's probably not even going to trip up the average person in the pew who doesn't even know what the hell they believe. Mm -hmm. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. That's an easy one. <laughs> yep. Have a good time. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks. My old seminary teacher used to say, yes, God can do those things, but he won't, because then he wouldn't be God anymore. That was, and he, I guess that was sufficient in his eyes. And at the, at the time, as a 15-year-old in seminary, I probably also was like, well, what a good answer. I can't wait to use that one day when to bearing my testimony or defending the faith or whatever else. So you, you put, Sorry, you put up a poll. I did. Uh, so first of all, we, we've got one caller on the line right now. We're going to get to in a minute. We still haven't gotten theist callers. I know we're, we're starting a whole hour early. And so it's not surprising yeah. that we're, we're going to be light on some calls, but you put up a poll in chat. Yep. Um, that says, what are you? 88% so far have said atheist. 0% have said theist and 11% are just fucking wrong. Okay, so because they they pick third option. So what I was going to do, uh, and I and, and you're anticipating it maybe a little, is I put up this poll on purpose, knowing that uh, some percentage of people would say third option based on a past poll, and I was going to invite anybody who said third option uh, to call in because I'd like to know what you think the third option is. Uh, you, yeah. we've like I said, we've got ten percent, so that's that's roughly uh, twenty twenty three ish people of you. Uh, 23 of you in the po in the chat have said that. It's funny. Every now and then it says 1% theist, and then it goes back down to zero, which means um, 
there's at least, I think one person has said theist and then it gets drowned out. Uh, but no, I'd actually really love to have that conversation. If you have put a third option, if you have voted for third option in the uh, live poll, uh, your options were atheist, theist, and third option. And I'd love to hear what you, what third option you believe exists uh, and, and discuss that because I actually think some of these clarifying conversations would not just have happening in a sort of pedantic self filating uh, way uh, are actually pretty useful for some people who are watching, to, who are trying to figure out where they fall on some spectrum. So if you've uh, voted for third option, we're now up to roughly 30 of you have, uh, I want to hear from you. Call in. Let's hear how, let's hear what your third option would be. We had a caller from India with a question all typed up who seems to have dropped instantly. Um, so I want to I want to kind of hit this question real quick. They, mm -hmm. they may call back, but uh, what's the best way to fact check things quickly? Since Google isn't always trustworthy for someone like me who has two jobs, not everyone has enough time for proper epistemology. If you don't have time to do the research, then you shouldn't have an opinion on it. If if you are at a position where you are unable to spend time to investigate properly, then your position should be, I don't know. I don't currently have a position on that. Um, Google is is about the best place to start. Uh, Wikipedia is also a good place to start, provided you also go down to the 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 links at the bottom, the footnotes where, where there are references, so that you can dig through there and, and find stuff. Um, it's not like Google is pointing to truth, though, and it's not like there's a single source. Right. I mean, if you want to find out if, if something you read on the internet is true or not, there's a number of different websites um, Sno like, like Snopes and others that do some investigative uh, work for you to find that. Um, but there's no problem at all with saying, you know, I don't know what I think about that yet, or I don't have a solid opinion, or the research I've done hasn't led me to a strong conclusion, um, or any of those things. But, I mean, Google's just a search engine to find those sources. Uh, and what you're, what I look for are reputable sources that have a track record of applying skepticism and uh, demanding evidence for positions before they advocate for it. I stay away from anything that is clearly, you know, like the Onion parody. Uh, I hate those sites. I used to love them, but I hate them now. Um, I think they've made us dumber. But um, I, I tend to, to look around and say, okay, this was written up and it's posted on a website, but is it is the style that it's written in presenting scientific facts or reasonable findings, or is this trying to sensationalize something? And that's yeah. going to determine that kind of leads me to how much I need to dig in. Um, how do you, how do you go about figuring out what sources to trust? I, I was the, the question I thought was uh, sort of not, so I'm not trying to criticize the person for the question. Cause I think I know what they're trying to ask, but to ask uh, where do I go when Google's unreliable is a bit like saying like, uh, the library is unreliable or, you know, the Dewey decimal system, the reference system when I went and I looked for a topic. Um, but yeah, usually it, it, it's, it begins with, uh, there are some websites where it, you know, it's funny too, because there's, there's a gradient of how much do I need? So if I'm just trying to find out what the weather is in a certain area, I just trust any weather website. And, and I don't question it at all, honestly. If I, if I look on weather.com at what the weather in, in Milwaukee is like, I just trust it and I just go on with it. I don't check any sources. But like you mentioned with Wikipedia, going and checking references, going and checking if, if these are actually legitimate studies. Uh, and then some of the stuff that I guess I, I have a little bit of a, a bias end on, but sometimes somebody will cite like a, a in a tweet or something, some sort of study, and I'll often click those. And there's a certain way a website is laid out where you know that this is this is a bogus website. Like the fake news websites all kind of look alike. Um, but yeah, an invest going beyond the first link is what's important. But I do weigh it to whatever it is I'm I'm uh, looking at. Um, even with some news stuff, you know, not necessarily down to the specific details or some of the greater implications, but for the most part, as I'm engaging with the news, a, a, a website that says this event happened in this day, 
I sort of take that on face value, but not in a way that if somebody then came along and said, it was all a hoax. Uh, it's not like I, I then went, I promise this, this thing is true because it was on New York times or whatever bullshit. Sure. Yeah. No, right. is no one calling to defend the third uh, option? Okay, yeah, we've got one person. I, I, I've seen, a, and we're still screening calls, so we'll we'll see how it goes. But it is uh, it is very interesting to me. This uh, the even since we acknowledged the poll, it's tripled in the number of votes. But the third option, even though we've declared that we don't think there is a third option, the third option has stayed at roughly the same percent. It's only moved one or two percent. Uh, up and down. Cool. So well, I definitely want we'll to hear from you. Yeah. Maybe we'll get somebody in before long, but we've got Becca in Egypt. Pronouns there. She, her. Welcome to the Sunday show on the line. You're live. Becca, can you hear us? Becca. I you know, I Becca may walked away. Well, I also saw Becca earlier has gone in and out of the queue a couple of times. And I almost wonder if that means there was some audio issues with the screener. So uh, maybe we return to queue and try again, see if Becca decides to hang up and call back if it is an audio issue or, uh, All right. or what. Well, we got, we've got you a third caller option. So Sven in Washington, pronouns are they, them. Uh, you're on the Sunday show live with a third option. Hi there. So, yeah, uh, I'm kind of identified as the third option. Usually if people ask if I'm an atheist or theist, I say I'm spiritual. And I think that's because I agree with like two thirds of what the theists believe and hard to identify as an atheist when. But if somebody says, if somebody says, are you atheist or theist? And you say, I'm spiritual. How is that an answer to the question? Uh, well, cause I guess, uh, like, I kind of agree with agnosticism. Like, I think even the discussion of God is incoherent because we are not God, and you have to be able to experience something to discuss what it means to be that. Yeah. Sven, real quick, can you, can you get closer to your microphone? You're just real quiet, and I think, like, you're so quiet, your own microphone is sometimes cutting you off like your background noise. Did we lose you, Sven? Sven, are you there? Hi, is this better? Yes, entirely yes. better. Okay, so to recap, what you just said is, uh, if somebody asks you atheist or theist and you say spiritual, how does that answer the question? You said because you agree with, and it sounded like you said agnosticism, but then maybe even stated Ig. the claim of agnosticism. Which one was Ig. it? Ig, okay. Yeah, like I don't think we can discuss what it, what a God would mean because we are not God. And I think to discuss any kind of metaphysical or spiritual experience, you have to be that entity. So I don't think discussions of God Wait, are comprehensive. Only, yeah. only God can have a concept of God and discuss God? Why is that? Because no human is able to understand God. You know, that's kind How of do you know that? Tend to say How do you know that? I would just, what the very definition of anyone's God that I've ever heard would need to require to you experience that. No, you just said that only God can even assess the concept of God, and yet somehow you claim to have ass assessed the concept of God and can made conclusions about it. Right, because isn't there like a, a saying that, uh, you know, any uh, advanced technology that's advanced enough will appear as magic? Um, and so, you know, anything that would say they are God, there would be no way to prove it is God unless we can experience what it means to be God. See, you are swap swapping back and forth between multiple concepts um, and avoiding answering what's actually been asked repeatedly. If your claim is only God can assess the concept of God, then you can't assess the concept of God, right? Yeah. But you did assess the concept of God in order to determine that only God can assess the concept of God, right? Correct. I, I would agree. I so that. now you are in logical contradiction. You have assessed the concept of God, 
and then asserted that only God can assess the concept of God. How are you doing something that, are you God? Definitely not. I don't think it would, I don't think that question makes sense. The question definitely makes sense, and you just answered it. I said, are you God? And you said, definitely not. How can you say, definitely not, and then say, I don't think the question makes sense? If, if it didn't make sense, you should be sitting there going, this is nonsense. I don't understand your question. But instead, you answered it and then said, def and then said it doesn't make sense. I, I guess I would do that to avoid long-form uh discussion i i apologize the true answer would be i don't think that question makes sense i i want to hit something okay. that i, oh, I want to hit something you said a little bit earlier first of all i wouldn't in your defensive agnosticism ever try and pull the uh the the quote about it being imperceivable from magic advanced enough technology being imperceivable from magic because that's only an initial reaction that's if we were to go back two thousand years and show someone a smartphone or even 100 years, 100, 500, whatever, it would seem incredibly magical. Uh, that doesn't mean we then couldn't take that 500-year-old person and, and potentially teach them how it works and uh, disillusion them to the idea that it is magical. Um, the, concept of, <clears throat> the concept of God can't be understood, if that's according to only other individuals' definitions, then the meaning is... is there's all someone would have to say is they have a concept of God that can be understood. And now you don't have something that is uh, uh, exclusive to a God or not. Well, you know, just because that was something you said as every definition I've ever heard. Uh, he is something that couldn't be understood. Um, Cause they're like, a, you know, you have deistic people oh. or, and you have people who believe in simulation theory and they have an idea of this is what this type of God would be to us. the, it's just a weird, I guess the question I have at the end of the day, though, is if you're going to defend agnosticism, how can one defend agnosticism from a non-atheist perspective? How can one hold a belief in God that they think is impossible to conceptualize and therefore ridiculous to d even discuss? I guess because I leave God in the box of unknowable things for humans. Oh, no, 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 Sven. Sven. You don't just get to assert mm -hmm. that God is fucking unknowable. How did you determine that God is unknowable? Uh, it would just follow with my worldview with the, uh, what I say. If God is a metaphysical entity, a, a soul, so to speak, then I believe that the only metaphysics that a human can understand is a human soul. So I don't think anything, you know, goes what through. Anything like what, absolute, what absolute garbage is that? So first of all, any concept sufficiently defined can be understood. Second of all, this notion, which Jimmy kind of played into it a moment ago, which is why I tried to interrupt, that you can't understand something. I don't understand how... A bumblebee flies does that mean that i can't know that it flies no okay so whether or not you can fully understand a god is irrelevant to whether or not you can understand the god concept sufficiently to discuss it correct i wouldn't equate the two personally just because one physical and one's not but i didn't equate logic, yeah. i didn't equate the two do you understand what analogies are analogies are not equate they're not digital they're not saying these things are identity so you, are you saying that it is impossible for a human being to consider whether or not there is a being that is as powerful as possible and as knowledgeable as possible that we just can't even consider that because we seem to have considered it quite a fucking lot I would say any consideration as um, logical inconsistencies, and that's where it poses a problem for me. What? No, no, no. What, what, what is the problem with considering whether or not there's a being that is maximally powerful? 
because then it would go back to what you mentioned earlier about, you know, can he lift, make a stone that's so big that he can't lift it? No, it it's not. Sense. You're not even paying attention to the question. It has nothing to do with that. What is the problem with saying, can there be a being that has the most power possible? What is logically incoherent about considering that proposition? Uh, Brad, uh, Savannah, at this point, the amount of silence that there is indicates to me that that's the question you probably need to ponder on after this call for a bit. Uh, if I, yeah, can, I can do that. If I can simplify the exercise back to the original concept that we're discussing, I want to try something with you, Sven. Uh, uh, Sven, true or false, you, Sven, believe that there is a God. Uh, that's why I had to apologize earlier for missing. saying I would think that's an end on, you know, on Sven, Sven, Sven just, just true or false. No, just no, true or false. It's Sven. not. Un yeah. Do it again. Cause to say that it's unknowable, whether or not you are convinced of something is ridiculous. So try right. again. Right. The concept, the question isn't true or false. God exists. The question is Sven, true or false. Sven believes that there is a God. So, and I, I don't know if you muted your... I don't know. My honest answer is it's logically impossible Sven, for me to answer Sven, that. you're not true, listening. True or false? That. It's not I whether like God I'm exists. To know that. Okay, Sven, it's not about whether God exists. It's about whether or not Sven believes God exists. Right? True or, true or false? false. True, true false. or false, true or false, Sven believes I'm holding a mouse in my hand. True or false? True. True or false, Sven believes a God exists. False, but I would love for there to be lots of them. I didn't ask. I don't give a shit what you'd love. The, why, why on earth, when we spend all this time trying to drill down to a clear concept in order to teach you something, in order to gain clarity, why wouldn't you just answer with the true or false? Why do you have to add something else that's irrelevant? Is this a defense mechanism in your brain? Right now, you do not believe there's a God, correct? Correct, I am not convinced. Then you are not a third option, you are an atheist. Yeah, which... Should be fine, Sven. And I, I, I think that there, I think there must be at play because I see it all of the time, especially in religious areas. I, I think the thing that motivates you to try and do this third option stuff is wanting some level of acceptance from theists around you, wanting some level I of being able to say like, it's not like I'm an atheist. I am totally open. It's just that the concept of what you're saying, I don't know how to evaluate. I think that it's, it's, it's this. There's almost a type of uh, uh, agnosticism out there that's it's not it's not motivated by anything but wanting to not rock certain boats. And I, I can't say for sure that that's what you're doing, but it it feels like that's what you're doing. Uh, that that the word atheist you perceive it as having baggage, which it historically has baggage, but definitionally does not. That the baggage you perceive it having, you don't want to take on. Well, I just want to just clarify, I'm very against dogma. That's why I'm a third option, and I do will not say I'm a theist. I'm 100% against dogma. I moved out of Alabama to Seattle to get away from religion. So, I What does being opposed to dogma theist. have to do with whether or not you're an atheist or a theist? Neither atheism yes, isn't a dogma. I to fit in, because yes, I wanted to fit in, and I don't hang out with theists or go to it, church. It, or it wasn't like as much fit in, as, fit in with as not stick out. As as have no, something I, that's I a little bit I placating. Well, I I can play. I am against both sides. I stick out pretty well. I I agree with two thirds. You're of against Platonism. both sides. I'm perceived as you know. Neither side would really, I guess, agree with my thinking. Is what I mean. Yeah, because you're wrong. 
But wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. I, I, wait, no. I no, hang on, Sven. Sven, that's like saying an atheist will not agree with me on what my favorite food is. Categorically, that's not true. There are atheists who believe the exact same as you, but it doesn't have to do with their atheism. If the answer to Sven believes there is a God is false, then you are an atheist, and that's the whole thing. That anything that you want to extrapolate past that into agnosticism has to do with agnosticism, into whatever, simulation theory, or this God could exist, but how could we perceive it, are all concepts beyond atheism. Atheism, simply, and the common definition we're talking about is, do you believe a God exists? Yes or no? Your answer is no. You don't hold that belief. Doesn't mean you've eliminated the possibility. So you, if you're saying the both sides, where one side is theism and one side is atheism, that that's not true, that they would both be opposed to your belief, because at the core, the I don't believe in God, you would have that in common. If you want to say the sides are religious people and skeptics, I could see both of them rejecting your claim. Uh, but I don't, at, the at, two sides of atheist theism doesn't make sense. At, at every opportunity, when we've tried to ask you what your position is on whether or not you're an atheist, at al well, almost every opportunity, because we finally got there, you answered the question with something that's irrelevant. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't think we can know that. Well, I'm opposed to dogma. None of those have anything to do with whether or not you're convinced there's a God. I'm opposed to dogma too. But it's not relevant to whether or not you're an atheist. And so why is it when asked a question, you give answers to some other question? I, I'm not sure. I, I apologize that I was doing that. I was thought I was trying to answer the question as coherently as I could in the moment. I, so, and sure. I still appreciate What's, that you called if, for the challenge. If, if theism is the acceptance of the proposition that some God exists, and atheism is not the position of not accepting the proposition that some God exists, then you have A and not A, for which there can be no middle ground and no third option. So what is the third option that you think you've got? I guess in a logical sense, there wouldn't be a third option, but I would just say in a social sense, there definitely is for an identity. That's More what options. I was saying about baggage, buddy. Oh. Yep. Yeah, this isn't about a social sense or where you think you fit in or how you avoid being labeled as someone. Oh, the you know, like I oppose both sides. Uh, I'm opposed to dogma. Um, that's just insulting and stupid to yeah. suggest that those of us who identify as an atheist are somehow dogmatic or have taken up a, a, an equally untenable position to those with theist beliefs. That's not what any of this is. Oh no, I was this is to... this is the this is the smug to... this is the smug agnostic I'm better than both sides bullshit that I've been shooting down for 20 years. Well, I definitely don't think I'm better than either of you. I'm definitely leaving if this uh this call being defeated. I'm so glad you stood up. Ooh, I didn't mean to come across superior. Have a wonderful Sunday. Sven, Sven, Sven. Sven. Please, oh, no, I, no, no. I don't All want right. you to feel... Okay. The, Sven, I don't want you to feel hurt or attacked by us. I want you to... Actually, the thing I hope that you take out of this is the recognition that uh, the atheism... The, the baggage that comes with atheism is not because of atheists. It's because of bigotry. And it's important to me to take a person like you and not say, you're an atheist because I tell you you are, therefore you must pick up the label. Uh, that's not yeah. how any identifying should be. I want to compel you to understand that by, by common definition, you do qualify as an atheist and your reluctance to use that label is probably becoming from a society of bigots around you uh, and yeah. that it's not you shouldn't be scared of it. You And I hope and, you will participate in taking back the label. And Jimmy's right. You don't ever, neither of us would say, you're an atheist, you have to start using that label. No. Um, the only issue here was not what you were, but whether or not there was a third option. Yeah. And logically, there is not. But you say, you know, societally or socially, there is. Um, 
that's because the bulk of society doesn't understand logic, doesn't understand identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle, and would like to pretend that there's some middle ground between the extreme right-wing fundamentalist evangelical and the extreme left-wing socialist uh, atheist because they're conflating about five or six different topics. We're only talking about the one, and that is, A, A either there's a God or there's not a God. And what you believe about that, if you're convinced that there is a God, you're a theist. If you're con not convinced that there's a God, you're an atheist. And if you're convinced there is no God, then that would be strong atheism, hard atheism, stuff like that. The purpose of this, well, I, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry that you're uh, upset enough um, to respond that way, because none of this has anything to do with yep. you or your identity. It's is there a third option? And so far, I don't. I, there can't be a third option between A and not A, and that's the the thing that people overlook. So, in that uh, uh, in that vein, I think I want to, if you don't mind, I'd like to pick the next one because I I think go for it. Pick them all. No, uh, Peter in London uh, does believe there is a third option. Uh, so, Peter in London, you are on the line. Uh, hi, Jimmy. Hi, uh, hi, Matt. Hello. So basically, uh, uh, so I think the problem here is the definition. I actually pulled up the Oxford Dictionary definition and then Merriam-Webster uh, um, definition. Uh, and I also, uh, I was meaning to call uh, uh, with this for some time now, and I actually clipped uh, Matt's definition of uh, what an atheist or theist is. I don't remember which. Uh, but uh, basically, if I... Uh, I go to the Oxford definition, uh, it says uh, a person, uh, maybe it's the person who disbelieves or lacks belief in the existence of, of God or God. The problem there is that there are many propositions of God. So if the definition was for any proposed God, X, I don't believe in, in X, that would be, uh, that, would be uh, uh, that would be okay. But we're in a situation where we uh, usually talk about not believing a very specific God or believing no. a very specific God. No, yeah. no. Theism is the acceptance of the proposition that some God exists. That's it. It doesn't, it's, theism is not the acceptance that Yahweh exists. That would be Christianity or Islam or Judaism. Theism is just the acceptance of the proposition some God exists. That's it. And, it, and so, whether or not we can argue about which God might exist is a completely separate issue. Uh, okay, I'm seeing the chat. Sorry for my mic. Uh, uh, I'll try to move closer to it now. Uh, okay, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, as I said, uh, I, on the poll, I think I clicked atheist. Uh, I'm not sure I may have missed it, uh, a theist, but that's, that's neither here or there. Uh, but I'm just calling, uh, calling it to say that uh, depending on what definition you look at, you may have this third option. And uh, I also put in no, the, uh, the question box. Uh, uh, if I may finish that, uh, if uh, De define define the theism, define theism. Well, <laughs> it's, that's the thing. It's not that I'm not agreeing with you. I'm just saying that when you ask the, this uh, this question, that was in define the poll, theism. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, but. Belief in a god. Belief in a god. So theism is defined as belief that some god exists. Uh, yes. Okay. So if that's theism, then someone still either believes that claim or they don't believe that claim. Correct. Okay, so where's the middle ground under your definition of theism? It's not my definition. It's, it, it's, you, uh, it it's is your definition. I literally, I literally just asked you to define theism, and you fucking defined it. Oh no, but that's that's. I completely agree with you. I'm just I'm just calling to say that without without uh, pre, uh, giving a preamble uh, of what the definition of theism, uh, theism is or atheism or whatever, uh, you will. Get these kind of uh, questions. Uh, what do you mean by that? No, you shouldn't. 
I, I asked for a def I give me any definition of theism that you think allows for a third option. Uh, I believe that, uh, well, sorry, can we switch it over uh, and I'll give you a definition of atheism. Why would we do that if atheism is the, the position of not accepting a theistic proposition? Because if you, if you, if you uh, word it as not believing that a god exists, Yes, if you shift the burden of proof to the opposite side, everything becomes r r ridiculous. Uh, yeah, uh, um, but, but that's, uh, as I said, I, I consider myself uh, uh, an okay. uh, atheist. I'm just calling in to say that uh, it, it's, the, it's the language that has the problem here. It's, it's not logic. No, it's logic that has the problem here. The language is clear. Theism is the acceptance of the proposition that some God exists, period. For every proposition, okay. you either accept that proposition or you do not accept that proposition. There is no middle ground. For every single proposition that could ever exist, no matter what it is, you either accept that proposition or you do not accept that proposition. This is the foundation of logic. This is the foundation of identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. There is no third ground between I accept X and I do not accept X. And it doesn't matter what X is. That's the point. Uh, yes. Uh, and again, uh, I, I, I'm sorry if it's not uh, uh, as entertaining as some people might have quote, but it, I'm just calling with uh, uh, maybe, maybe pedantics, maybe arguing about definitions, but it's just, just that... That, that was my fault about it. I, I, I feel like, Peter, if I was trying to save your call, I would say <laughs> okay. the third option exists because m enough people will mistake the need for a third option that if you don't give them a third option, they will feel they can't vote. That's the closest to an honest position. That's kind of close to what you're saying that I can say I agree with. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it that way. Uh, That's I, why I said I, I'm trying to I, save your call. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, uh, it, it's uh, it's it's kind of weird for me because I agree with you guys. So I can't really, uh, uh, in in good faith, uh, 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 like try to convince you. I, I'm just trying. Right, to but Peter, that, Peter. That okay, so you said you wouldn't put it that way. So I'm going to give it a shorter version. The third option is necessary because of people's flawed perceptions. Right. So what is wrong yes. with that? Because that's the position you said you wouldn't. Maybe with you just meant phrasing. Having, with people having wrong perceptions. The third option I'm is necessary to... because people have a flawed perception that atheism and theism are not exclusively mutual. Uh, in a perfect world, I, I would say it's not necessary, necessary but yes. Uh, uh, well, in this case, you, you, uh, you gave the third option to basically uh, entice people to call in with, the, with their defense of the third option, and I feel for that. Uh, but uh, I see what you mean. Basically, uh, there, there will be people on the fence and will be trying to... Uh, no, 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 not on the fence. It's not, it's not on the fence, because on the fence okay. is still atheism. On the fence is still I don't yes. hold a belief in God. And that's still a, an atheist that, that would still fall on the side of atheism, though some people will argue not because they'll start bringing in agnosticism and Gnosticism. Uh, and and I fail to see how one can be an agnostic theist, but whatever. Uh, it's knowledge, not belief. I know all the stuff. Anyway, uh, I said, and it sounds like you didn't disagree, but you just is it is it baggage again? Is there a reason you don't want to say a reason you want to say I agree with your statement, but I don't want to identify that as my position too. I don't. I don't get the reluctance. Uh, okay, so maybe maybe uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, let me go to the, to the last statements I put in the description about everyone being an atheist, some just believing fewer gods than, uh, than right, others. Right, but that's that's that's. Hyperbolic, or uh, yeah. I don't know what phrase to use. You're not literally an atheist 
over 3,000 gods. If you if you don't believe in 3,000 gods, but you believe in one, you are still 100% a theist. You're not one three thousandth or whatever uh, thing. That That is an imperfect joke that basically broadcasts that there's not that much different. Like the, that's more to be, uh, to illustrate the fact that you think it's crazy I don't believe when you don't believe in plenty. It's just meant to say like, we're not as far off from each other as you're perceiving us as being off. But a person who believes in one God amongst, let's say there was a billion options, is still 100% a theist. Yep. Uh, but, but again, let me, let, me go, let me go back to uh, the source material, uh, uh, as it were. So if you define uh, uh, theism as a certain set, set of uh, properties of, of a person and then negate that and say that's atheist, then of course there is no uh, middle ground there. But the way it's defined in the dictionaries uh, uh, and maybe widely in the world, there, there actually seems to be uh, a place where you can kind of uh, uh, squeeze in or basically treat everyone as an atheist. No. I already explained. It doesn't matter what the... There is no proposition in the history of the world, in the history of all possible worlds, there is no proposition that one can accept, not accept, and a third option. That's not possible. Yes, and, and I completely agree. But that's because no, you no, a, you don't. You, no, you don't, Peter, because you just said that if you go to some dictionary definition, you end up with something that could get you to a third option. But no matter what the dictionary definition is, it is still a proposition which you either accept or don't accept. There's no middle ground. Oh, okay, let me rephrase the, the, the problem. Uh, well, the problem. Your definition is. A much is much more sound than the than the definition given uh, uh, in dictionary. It and doesn't matter what the no. Me. You're not paying attention. This isn't my definition. I just said it does not matter what the fucking definition is. No matter what the definition is, any fucking definition in the anywhere, no matter what it is. This is why I tried to get you to define theism, and yet you keep coming back to the well. There's a definition. If you define it a different way, no. No matter what the definition is, for every definition of every word, of every concept, ever in the history of everywhere, for every one of those definitions, you either accept it or you don't accept it, period. What definition are you think you're reading where there's a third option? Correct. So, okay. Uh, I, I don't think that I'll have any, uh, anything else useful uh, to add other than just people may may have mis misunderstood the question given the coll colloquial uh, definition uh, definitions of the words. On the basis of the... I, okay. I... I Peter, we've got more to, to, to defend the third option things, but it, once it, the final thing you just said there, if they're using the colloquial definition, Matt and I both use the colloquial versions of theism and atheism. And I think where it was getting mixed up is you, instead of going, theism is defined as this, therefore atheism is the rejection or non-belief or whatever term you want to use in that, you want to go to definitions of atheism that you th that basically don't start with the definition of theism, uh, yeah, and and then establish its negation. Yep. Right. So, in other words, if 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 atheism, so if there was a definition in a book where someone said atheism is the belief that cake is delicious, that would be a ridiculous definition to use. And yet, yes, still, that's not the case. And yet, still everyone would still be an atheist or not an atheist. That's true. We should put the poll back up and have it be 
are you a theist, not a theist, or third option? Because if it doesn't get the same results, then Peter's point about, oh, well, maybe they have some misunderstanding about atheism, which is why they're seeking a third option. Yes, I, I have no doubt that that's happening. People can be wrong. Okay. Other than oh, okay, uh, as I said, it's it, it's hard to uh, argue further because I, I said my piece, so uh, and I completely agree. So uh, I'm ready to be released into the wild. No worries. We 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 are a catch and release program. So. That's right. <laughs> yes. So if I we, we hereby up, release you. Thanks, Peter. And already on the new poll, 7% think there's an option between theist and not a theist. Literally, we have A and not A and people suggesting in See. violation of the foundations of logic that there is a third option. Yeah. I, I hope you're trolling. Uh, uh, one, I'm very much actually enjoying having... I, I enjoy... Uh, correcting incorrect atheists as much as I enjoy trying to correct theists. Uh, how, however, we do have lines available for theists still. Uh, that one was line six, so I can take that off. Uh, we do have lines available for theists still uh, while we're letting these third options take a couple more lines than we usually do. Uh, we do still have some reserved just for theists. What, what yeah, is that? I mean, it, it's, it's fun. It's good conversations um, of people who... I, I, there's some clarity lacking. So pick us another one. This one's very interesting to me. Uh, and I think that let's, yeah, let's go with Val. Cause I think I will be empathetic to Val's reasoning while still rejecting that there is a third option. So Val in Texas, you are on the line. Oh, uh, Hey guys, what's happening? What up? Fellow Just doing a show. That's right. Alrighty. Um, so it's, it's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Um, I know that I am most likely an atheist, but I don't feel like the label necessarily suits me due to a personal experience that I had. And uh, whenever I talk about this with other atheists, they just kind of like side eye me. So, I, you know, I just I don't believe in a God. And okay. I, I don't know. I'm just like a, I'm a little confused. So maybe y'all can help me out. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can. I think you've already established that you are an atheist because you've said, I don't believe in a God. Um, so we're, we're at atheist, yes. So now you have a position that you feel, and let me just make a, because I, I like doing this on the show, so I'm going to make a quick prediction. I'm going to guess that you have something that skeptics reject, but because atheism often is filled with gatekeeping, uh, and purity checking on the basis of skepticism for better or worse. I'm a skeptic, so I don't necessarily hate that, but, uh, that because you fail, you have a, you may have a belief or a suspicion that fails skepticism. You feel that atheists are going to sort of unkindly meet that experience. And so you don't feel like you could have community with skeptic atheists and that's your reluctance. That's going to be my guess. Uh, absolutely. You got it right on the on the dot hundred <laughs> percent yeah uh it's it's not my first day val uh val what's the experience do you want to talk about it uh yeah I, I don't mind talking about it i'm still skeptical about what happened Good. i i'm planning on going back to the place um maybe bring a camera with me and record everything because like i said again i was i want to say i was uh 11 or 12 years old when this happened my sister's like three years younger than me mm -hmm. and my cousin's even a couple younger than uh younger than my sister is and we all saw and experienced something so um cool my sister and my cousin were playing in the back room okay and they saw um a baby and I'm like, I'm not talking about a baby doll. I'm not talking about anything. And they saw a legit kid and they followed it into the bathroom and it wasn't in the bathroom. And my, I just remember my sister was like scared for whatever reason. And my cousin 
uh, went home and her mom called my mom and said, like, hey, y'all have a baby at, at y'all's house because... Val, real quick, um, uh, before, you, daughter, be, before yeah, you go on course. to beyond that, what ha- what happens with the baby? They followed the baby where and then what? It led to the uh, shower. And when they went to the shower, it wasn't there. Uh, there's like they followed like followed it apparently like apparently like it ran towards the restroom or whatever and they were running and I could like I could hear something going on but I didn't know what was going on okay so 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 far that was with them so so the experience that we're right now discussing is you were at the same location as two other people who have claimed to see a baby run into a bathroom it sounds like get into a shower but then when they went to look in the shower, the baby was gone. Is that a correct summation? Are any of those details off? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Is there a part of the experience where you have a supernatural experience or is right now your experience a desire to believe them because they're family and you love them and you don't want to accuse anyone of being a liar and, and really the thing you don't know is how what they said could be true if they're not lying? Oh, no. Um, I was kind of, I've always been kind of uh, skeptical. I'm I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest. I've always had something in me just kind of knew that there was no God that I was just kind of like believing because people told me to believe. Sure, Val, but but the question I have is, is there a supernatural, uh, is there an experience you have that's part of this, that's a supernatural experience, or is it just... The, the, that's their experience and you're not ready to call them liars or whatever? No, it, it, I was skeptical about them, not only because they were younger than me, but um, I, I wasn't, you know, like I said, like I, I've always been kind of skeptical growing up. So what, what happened to me was I was on the couch and just like for shits and giggles, I was like, okay, well, if there is something, what do you want? And we had like letter magnets on the refrigerator and I kind of like laughed about this especially when it happened I laughed and I didn't think too much of it when this happened but the letter U flew at me and hit me on my shoe off of the refrigerator (laughs) yes off the refrigerator and And I just kind of laughed and this was when you were what age well this has to be I'm sorry what and this was when you were what age I want to say 11 or 12 years old Okay. And you're how old now? I'm 22, about to be 23. Okay. So uh, for my second, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, so we, you, you started this off by talking about you had an experience when you were younger, um, which makes you not consider yourself an atheist. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what's there. Um, okay. What, is it about having cousins and siblings who think they saw a baby or a refrigerator magnet flying at you that is somehow inconsistent with atheism? I'm sorry, could you say it one more time? Sure. We have two things so far. One of them is that you have a, a sibling or and or cousins who think they saw a baby. Um, and then it vanished, Uh, and you had a refrigerator magnet fly at you. What is it about either of those things that makes you not an atheist? What I I don't see any demonstration at all that either of those are tied to anything that could be used to justify belief in a god. But I see what you're meaning, and uh, it's just kind of like what Jimmy was saying, that you know, like when I bring this up with other atheists and I just don't feel like the, like I do like the label justice, if that makes sense. Yeah. You don't have to worry about people gatekeeping atheism. Uh, uh, it's, it's something that is silly. Uh, so I'm glad that you acknowledge that, that you are an atheist and there's other stuff when we're talking, when we're taking that on the claims of the, the skept, your skepticism surrounding this, if you are planning to go back and take a look, that all sounds great. I will tell you, while it's difficult for you to dismiss, it's not difficult for me to dismiss your story or at least go, I can think of several much more likely things, which begin with a bunch of 11-year-olds sitting around excited, 
talking about the ghost. I used to do this with Bigfoot because Mormons believe in Bigfoot and that that's Cain. Uh, sitting around talking about the, you know, the stories of, of this thing existing. Uh, and then the story becomes a letter you was thrown from the refrigerator, whether or not that event actually happened or not isn't truly important. And then the story gets built on. And if it didn't happen, that a child's memory, after you're telling the story, telling the story, telling the story, that at a certain point, you don't actually know that it didn't happen. Now, I'm not saying this is the explanation, but it's the one that's a lot more likely than ghosts are throwing refrigerator magnets. Uh, and we and so it's, we don't know. How do you know it's right. a ghost and not an angel or a devil or, you know, or, or that you know, invisible magnet monster? You're yeah. you're absolutely right, and that's why I want to I want to go back and investigate it because you know I, it was so oh. long ago that you know I was a child that I could have you know like maybe my mind was playing trick tricks on me or something. So I think how can know, you possibly go back, go and, back and check? How can you possibly go back and investigate it? I gave this some some thoughts, and if somebody had moved into the house, I would go over there and tell them if they have been experiencing anything. If it kind of lines up, then I'd be like, okay, well, that doesn't explain it 100%, but then I would go further and ask if I could maybe use their house, hopefully, or maybe if, like, it's not even bought yet, maybe I'll just, like, rent it out for, like, a couple of months and see what that does. I don't know. I mean, Val, so first of all, it's you're saying that you're not going to investigate the original, which fair enough, you can't. There's there's no way to investigate whether or not there was a baby there when you were 11 uh, or that that at that time magnets would be thrown off of. Uh, however, as far as asking people who what percentage of people believe in some form of ghosts, the number of people who think that there are hauntings in their house and then come up with backstories. The number of, I, I talked about this when I did the show with Seth this week, we were talking about ghost stories and how somehow every downtown, every historic downtown building in Cheyenne, Wyoming in downtown Cheyenne, apparently they were all brothels, every single one of them at the same time, uh, the, you know, all these historic buildings, the theaters and everything, uh, uh, all of them were brothels and all of them had a prostitute die in them. And that prostitute is haunting each one of those buildings. Cause I've literally in Cheyenne, been told, you know, this is the Atlas Theater, the most haunted theater in the U.S. because a prostitute died. And, and there's no history to any of this stuff. The the number of people who believe this and look for hauntings and all of that, as far as asking the new owners if they've had any issues or or whatever, would tell me nothing because uh, uh, you're either going to get a person who believes in ghosts and then probably thinks that there has been things going on or doesn't. Uh, which won't speak to whether or not the ghost actually exists or whatever you think the explanation might be. Um, so at best, it would, if you yeah. certainly be interesting if the new owners said, yes, every Saturday afternoon, there's a ghost baby that runs into the bathroom yeah. and disappears. That would definitely be interesting. But even if you bought the house, moved in and lived there for 20 years, if nothing ever happened again, that wouldn't tell you anything at all about what that experience was at the time. Even though, even what Matt just offered, my first instinct would be, oh, those kids t have been telling that story so much since then that the story of the baby running has gotten to the new owners who have picked it up because it's interesting to say your house is haunted. And that have you talked? It's been 11 years. Have you talked to the people who said they saw a ghost baby? What's their recollection like now? Um my sister won't talk about it like I, I brought it to her recently and i was really dead serious with her i told her like hey if you saw something like this ain't a joke you got to tell me and she said like i'm not joking i really did see something and i just don't want to talk about it and my cousin you know how i said that she was a few years a few years younger than my sister uh she has no recollection of it so okay Wait, you said a f nine years old, two years run younger, right? Uh, I think my sister's like three years younger than me uh, at the time. Okay. Like, uh, so I was 12 or 11, and then she was like three years younger than me. I don't want to talk about this thing that poses no threat to me as a red flag, but whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's that, that to me is a, is a armchair 
uh, I'm an armchair body language expert like everybody else on the internet. I can tell by the pattern of that speech that that's a lie. However, my brain does go to this sounds like somebody who isn't. I'm sorry. Uh, um, no, 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 you don't have anything to apologize body. for. I'm talking about the, the person uh, yeah. saying they don't want to talk about it. Just sounds like a person oh, avoiding okay. maintaining their bullshit. About, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't. Sorry, I, I didn't mean that sound like I was criticizing you. Uh, if it if it um I, I don't know if this uh is tied to anything at all but after that uh my sister wouldn't leave my mom's side so and then she wouldn't want to be alone like in the back room again so right but I, I, but I is know. that is that possible so just giving you again some natural things to ponder on is it possible mm -hmm. that after making up a story or having some sort of story happen or having something actually scary happen and then the details get mixed up, that something completely natural could have happened surrounding the generation of that story that would have still uh, put a per it's I, again, I just think about times I was around a campfire talking with kids about Bigfoot and then everybody's like, all right, should we all go back to our tents and sleep? And everyone's like, no, nah, maybe we should just stay out here and sleep in a group. And there's been no Bigfoot, but we're telling Bigfoot stories and suddenly we're afraid of Bigfoot. Right. It's a, it's just not, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, there's, there's a reluctance I know we all have to tell people they're wrong. Well, not the people who host the show, but to tell people that they're wrong about their perception or that they are lying or whatever else. When we're talking about a child's memory, this is something that also got brought up during the show with Seth and children are really fucking stupid and really fucking imaginative. Uh, and, right. and honesty, the, the, the compulsion to be honest is a, only a learned behavior at that age. Uh, the actual like way, the parts of your brain that develop the mechanisms to sort of understand why honesty is important doesn't come out, I think, until your late teenage years, which is why so many children are fucking liars also, but that's not as important. Uh, I don't know. It's just, you are an atheist, Val. I would, if I was you, I would try and look more into skepticism and, and read more about it and read about how to be a skeptic. And I think that you might get some comfort from that to where you can go, I don't need to hold even a suspicion on this. I can just be aware that this was said or that this experience is easy enough to go. Maybe I don't know how a magnet, but I don't even know if I can trust my memory of the magnet being thrown at me or whatever else, as, as many people who were very religious and thought they had lots of supernatural experiences, uh, and then later in life, they stop believing. And some of the old experiences, they're like, okay, like for me, all of my ghost and demon experiences were sleep paralysis. And when I learned about sleep paralysis, I now had not just an explanation, it was the explanation. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't think this is one that you should have difficulty letting go of, even if you don't feel like you know the answer to it. I think my yeah, my, my big my big takeaway Val is this. One thing I like to do, especially if I don't, if there's been some weird experience or whatever else, um, and I don't necessarily know what it is, is to say, let's assume for a second that everything that your sister and cousin uh, saw is accurately reported, that they in fact saw some sort of apparition that appeared to be a baby run into down the hallway and run into the bathroom and that your own recollection of a the you refrigerator magnet um launching at you uh, let's assume those are all completely accurate what conclusion could anybody draw from those things could we conclude that there's a god no can we conclude that there are ghosts no can we conclude that there's a problem with magnetism in the area? No. At the end of the day, we have some experience for which we don't have an explanation. And when we list the candidate explanations, we have to include that you, your memory or their memory is potentially mistaken, or that while you are accurately recalling your perception of the experience at the time, that that may not be an accurate reflection of what actually happened, much the same way that I've fooled people with magic tricks and on one, one or two occasions when they didn't even know I was doing a, a magic trick type thing. Not that there has to be intentional deception. But if, if you're 22 and for 11 years 
you've been sitting here wondering about this refrigerator magnet and it's keeping you from, you know, saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't believe in a God, even though you're okay saying it. If, it, if it's there as a stumbling block, yeah, I'm with Jimmy. I'm like, I don't know what about this. I've had weird experiences. Uh, I've had experiences and my memory of some of them. Um, I, I just, I, I'm not so in love with my memory of that of the experience that I had that I think something actually happened. I just have to realize that people are often wrong, that something that looked weird, like the moon vibrating, could have been any number of things, including just a problem with my eyes or my brain or whatever else, but I don't have any way to go back and investigate it, and so I'm stuck. And I think I think probably the, one of the key differences, maybe, I don't want to project too much into this, Val, is that as much as I'd love to have the right answer, I'm more terrified of accepting the wrong answer. I would rather be in a position where I don't have an explanation for something than to have the wrong explanation for something. And yes. if I can't go back and investigate it, then I just kind of give it up and say, well, that was weird. I don't know what it was. Nothing else I can do right now. Right. All right, Val. I think we've given you a lot to think about. We'll follow up later, all right? Well, I'm asking Alrighty, you to follow I up with us later. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Thanks, Val. Oh, wait. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I heard wait, but then the call was gone. Um, I, you see line two there, right? Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's up to you. I don't, I, I, I sit there and I go, well, I feel my like. Problem, my problem isn't with agnostic theists. It's with agnostic atheists. Uh, that's line three. Sorry, I'm using the shortcut numbers, not the, yeah, I get it. Oh. Um, yeah, the, the. I kind of want to. I kind of want to jump to. But okay, Brian's been waiting forever, so I think we should get yeah, Brian on. Yeah, go with whatever. Uh, Brian in North Dakota, you are on the line. Brian, you sound like popcorn popping on the apricot tree. That's a Mormon oh, reference. I'm not sure how we'd fix it. Oh, you're good. You're good now. All right, Brian, go ahead. Oh, I'm good. Yep. Glad to hear it's fixed. All right. So my question uh, basically is. Is a agnostic theist a valid position? And I was wondering what you both thought about that. Uh, that said, sure. Jimmy, you did kind of answer the question while I was on the waiting, to an extent. Yeah, I'm. I'm just going to listen to Matt's answer too because I, I've, I'm also interested to hear Matt's. I haven't figured it out in my head how to be an agnostic theist. So knowledge is a subset of belief. Yeah. And for the positive proposition, some God exists. One can believe that proposition, but not say that that belief rises to the level of knowledge. So one can okay. be agnostic in the sense of, I don't, I believe there's a God, but I'm not claiming to know there is a God. Now, the one that doesn't make sense isn't agnostic theist. That, that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is agnostic atheist. That can only make sense uh, in the context of atheism as a positive assertion that no God exists. And in that sense, you could be saying, I actively believe that there are no gods, and I claim to know that there are no gods. But you cannot say, I don't believe there's a God, and I claim to know. I mean, you can't have a, a, a knowledge about a non a non-belief position. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, I think mostly I was saying that I was agnostic atheist simply because I've heard people claim that they were gnostic atheist. So I was just using the counter to that. Yeah. I think I add agnostic to before atheist as a rejection of, um, uh, strong atheism, not a rejection of strong atheism, but as a distinction from, uh, uh, yes, I don't, I don't believe there is a God and I'm agnostic. Because I'm telling you that I don't. It almost makes the term, I don't get necessarily, yeah, it almost makes adding, it almost makes it useless, purposeless to even add it to the whole thing. But um, yeah, I, I certainly don't claim to know there are no gods. 
Uh, if uh, if but I, I may, don't believe in any. Uh, I added agnostic atheist to mine because I had heard people calling gnostic atheists, and also because when I would say I'm an atheist, they would say, "Oh, you claim there's no God," and I respond with, "No, I don't know." So I started saying I'm agnostic to cut it off, sort of. Yeah, but yeah. so so yes. So one can be a theist or an atheist in the sense of one can accept the theistic proposition or reject the theistic proposition. There's a separate proposition because theism is about the proposition some God exists. Right. There's the hard atheist position that accepts the proposition no God exists. That is a mistaken line of thought in my view because it adopts, it, it shifts the burden of proof on the subject of the existence of God to I'm asserting there is no God, which which would require exhaustive knowledge of everything everywhere, including exhaustive knowledge of what counts as a God. And so that's why I don't advocate for there is no God. Colloquially, I'm happy to say there is no God or God is just pretend. I did a video recently about a shirt I have that says God is just pretend. But on the theistic side, when you when you when you have the proposition some God exists. You can either accept it or reject it. And then belief, knowledge being a subset of belief, you can either view that as knowledge is justified true belief, or you can view it like I do, which is knowledge is about one's confidence level in a belief, essentially saying, I really, really, really believe it. Like it would be worldview altering to discover I'm wrong. There are theists who believe that a God exists and will claim that they know that God exists. As a matter of fact, they're happy to say, I know that I know that I know that I know that Jesus Christ is Lord, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so on that front, one can be a Gnostic theist. I believe there's a God and I know that there's a God. An agnostic theist, I believe there's a God, but I'm not claiming that this belief rises to the level of knowledge. When you get to atheism, it's only if you're defining atheism in terms of accepting the proposition no gods exist um which is not that's that's strong atheism that's hard atheism that's anti-theism depending on what definitions you're using and if you were to do that you could say i believe that there that no gods exist and i know that no gods exist in that case you could be a gnostic atheist um and if you say i believe that there that no gods exist but it doesn't rise to the level of knowledge you could be an agnostic atheist but in there we're using the strong atheist hard atheist position and not the mere rejection of theism could one pedantically claim to be a a, a gnostic atheist to mean i know that i don't believe there's a god no because that knowledge <laughs> is, is not an awareness of the belief the belief is i i, I do not believe there's a god you're you're describing knowledge as not in i know the position, but I am aware of my position. Mm. And so that's not knowledge as a subset of belief. That's K and O W as familiarity with. I might still do it in some subreddits to annoy some pedantic philosophy bros. Uh, I'm sure you'll make a meme someday that will take off and cost me hours of my life to produce a video <laughs> to re reject this nonsense notion. Like I have the time to go fight on Reddit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I hope that clears up stuff, Brian, because I get it. It it seems confusing to many people. Yeah, I, I think it clears it up. I think really the confusion to me was I may have been using a different definition of uh, atheism and theism, much not less a uh, not really knowing more of is convinced of. So atheist would be is not convinced of mm -hmm. uh, the God existence and a but that's Gnostic what belief means. Be, or Gnostic atheist is it? Okay. Belief is just the state yeah. of being convinced. Right. I'll have to think about that a little bit more. I'm not I'm not sure if I agree that belief in no can be used similarly in that sense, I think, or maybe I'm misunderstanding. I know there's I know there's another way that works where agnostic atheism agnostic isn't an adverb. It's basically just listing the two next to each other. I'm sorry if you already covered this. At one point, I was trying to figure out if there was a worm in my water. Uh, but I know that there are some people who go, I don't believe in God, and I believe Gnosticism or agnosticism is almost a different proposition of is whether God, ex whether God exists knowable uh, in a practical sense. And so it's almost I'm saying I don't think that it's knowable, therefore I'm agnostic, 
I don't believe in a God, therefore I'm an atheist. I'm agnostic atheist. And, and yeah, because think, God uh, has been able to have every quality, including hiding no matter how hard you look, I think that that's probably why a lot of people pick up that term for it. Yeah, I think I'll probably have to uh, rewatch what you guys said here, uh, rewatch it so I can get a more clear view of what you uh, mean. Yeah, I still don't know whether or not this thing at the bottom of my water is a worm, but it's not moving, so that's good. Anyway, thanks for coming. Yep. For the talk and jimmy go fuck yourself thank you you know <laughs> word while i like it maybe we just save that as a super chat and chat meme because i'm not sure when we play these as clips that people who uh, clips are often a person's first experience with us uh and we don't explain every time on the clip so maybe we hold that to more of a chat meme which i understand by saying do that less people will now do it more but i tried um but 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 all right. I think we've only got. I think we only have one more atheist who wants to basically talk a bit about the third option, and then uh, we've got another atheist about Islam, and we have a couple of theists that are waiting. Also, uh, I'm just going to go in order of when the calls came in. Yep. Uh, we'll take a little palate cleanser from the third option and talk about the Islam stuff. Uh, and then we'll be finishing the show with a couple of theist calls. But I, I think other than that, we're going to suspend new calls unless these end up going super fast. Uh, so starting with Becca in Egypt, an atheist who has a Muslim spouse. Becca, you're on the line. Hi, good evening, Jimmy and Matt. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. I'm calling back in. We mm -hmm. thought we lost you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so... I um, am having some issues with my spouse when it comes to critical thinking and skepticism. And from what I have observed and what I can understand so far is that it comes from religion. This is something, for example, like we, we have conversations about religion and about Islam and we sit beside each other and argue our own points. And then we just hold hands and have supper like, we we do that like on a, I would say on well, almost weekly basis. Um, so we discuss Islam, we discuss Christianity, and he seems to very easily dismiss things like the Trinity, things about Christianity. But then when I point out something which is illogical in Islam, he doesn't see it. That's one thing, and the second thing is his gullibility when it comes to not using critical thinking, which has cost us um, a lot of things in practical life. Like we live in Egypt right now, and the reason why we live in Egypt, um, so I am European, I don't want to state the, my country, just Europe, sure. and we moved last year. We moved last year to Egypt because of um, because basically he trusted someone who basically made him have to move. Let's made him have to leave Europe. Let's put it that way. So we're here in Egypt because of that. Um, another thing is our finances and who he trusts. Also because the religion says he must trust his elders. He must respect his elders. So it does affect his his belief system affects our life. And I've managed to make some inroads. For example, when we discussed Noah's flood, we did come to potentially this could have been, this could have happened not globally, but just in the world that was known at the time. Like I, I managed to get him to consider maybe it didn't happen in like the Americas, Greenland, Iceland, Australia. Maybe it happened in the known world. So we, I think I've made inroads, but now we're discussing kind of flat earth and the, a globe earth. I'm just happy he's not driving any planes because he would take people to the wrong destination. <laughs> uh, Becca, real quick, first thing, it, it, whatever microphone you're using, if it's from your phone or stuff, if you can just move it physically away from your mouth a little bit, you're not clipping as much as some okay. people do, but you're, you're clipping a little bit. Uh, and that'll just help with our audio okay, quality so here. Testing, one, two, three. Yes, this Is seems this better. Testing, one. There was a little clip in there, but it, it, it definitely seems better than before. Um, but otherwise, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll back off now and uh, let you get to your question. So, 
Thank you. My question is, can you help me out to have better conversations? Like when it comes to globe earth and flat earth, I asked him like, how would he cross the distance from Canada to Russia on a flat earth? And he's like, oh no, they're touching. I'm sorry. Because I don't, anyway. It's what, what's just, touching? That's, Canada that's and the, Russia on flat earth model. Canada and Russia. Even on a flat earth, because you have the North Pole in oh, they, the center of his of the flat earth model he has in his mind. They, and they certainly so used to touch. Russia and, and Canada can be near each other. So, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say, because, I mean... Um, <laughs> Even I, I, I there don't know a, what to say. There, there was a land bridge between them. Um, yes. But, so, I, I would recommend pointing to, like, Simon Dan and Conspiracy Cats and other people who spend <laughs> a lot of time actively debunking flat earth stuff but okay i i it's wow for me one of the biggest problems when it comes to people who are accepting things like flat earth is that there's two components here one is that they either haven't been given the skills to learn how to evaluate claims um but yeah. also they haven't been given like some basic fundamental knowledge like if the flat earth model were correct, then you're describing a universe where every star is an oblate spheroid, the way gravity works around black holes has them in any sort of spherical sense. Every planet we've ever observed is an oblate spheroid. Every moon we've ever observed is that way. And earth is somehow a special thing. Um, yeah. Flat and different from everything else. Um, that yeah that's the next thing i'm you going can't, to i'm going you to can't point make out. we observe eclipses and you can't make eclipse work on the flat earth model along with day and night cycles and everything yeah. else that we have none of this stuff works out and i'm sure that you've you know you've gone through some of it and addressed it um it may be worth setting aside the flat earth stuff and just talking about how we would go about telling if anything is true of reality. Yeah, that's, um, that comes, okay, so two things. So thank you for that advice, I might take it on. Um, Let's so move the, the mic away things, again, I think um, you've gotten back close are, to it. Sorry, sorry. You're okay. So the two things related to, related to critical thinking, um, for example, um, he doesn't use critical thinking skills when it comes to, to who to trust. And I've pointed out people he can't trust. And he he doesn't understand why, even though I explain it time and time again. I'm like, you have to ask these questions because that person is not going to pay you for your work, for example. And it has been true every time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've said. And, uh, and I did the thing, um, like he'll tell me stuff, Beck, I can't question because my religion says I can't, or else, um, I don't know, it's just, there's, he's a really good person, he's a re I wouldn't have married him if he weren't a good person, you know? Sure. Um, he's, like, I'm, I'm older than him by 14 years, yeah. and I have white hair, and he knows, like, I'm worried about, I'm not, I'm, it's on my mind, I'm self-conscious about my white hair, and one time I was just looking at them in the mirror and he, he just came over and kissed them, you know, kissed me on the head where I have some white hair while I was mentioned. He's a re got a really good heart. He sounds sweet. You know what I mean? Becca, um, yeah, yeah. Very much so. I, I think, uh, I think my instinct is to send you to a channel called street epistemology. Are you already familiar with it? Yes. Anthony Ma Mania Bosco. Okay. Um, the, the type of character of person that you're describing Usually, mm -hmm. those are I, I find that that model of conversation goes well with like people who are actually like Mormons who are independent from their Mormonism, good people, uh, and have some yeah. ridiculous beliefs. Um, I find that that something like that that model of conversation is usually the most effective. The hardest part is knowing if you have tools and you are one who likes to argue and likes to debate. Uh, the hardest part is getting to that point 
where you get them to where you should leave them alone and let them think on it. Uh, Because when I get to that point, my instinct is going, ha ha, now you're seeing. So now acknowledge you or whatever. You know, I want to I want to then flip it back to debate. Um, And that can be tricky. It's very true. It's very true because that that part is hard. And I've learned to step away and like discuss what we're having for supper kind of thing instead. Sure. And we both have a good sense of humor. So that helps. But about the skill set, um, for example, one time he asked me, like, Dick, can you, can you explain to me what left-wing and right-wing politics are? And I said, yeah, okay, but like, I'm going to try and not influence you and just give you an explanation. And I did that. And then every time we came across some news piece or something that was happening around us, I point out that's left-wing, that's right-wing. You know, so even here, he's lived in Europe as well for a few years. He's lived in other countries for a few years, not just here in Egypt. Um, but um, he he gets it now, what's left and what's right. But the education here, they focus so much on reciting the Quran by heart. Yep. That yep. even like his younger siblings, they really don't they really don't get a good education. And the government right now over here, the president has abandoned his job completely. So education here is one of the lowest in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think, go yeah, go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say that, you know, earlier when you said that he says they can't question things because of his religion, I would, I would focus on that uh, at, at least as, as, as a temporary aside to say, Oh, you're not allowed to question certain things because of your religion. But how do you know that that's the right religion if you're not allowed to question it? And what would a God have to fear from you questioning? If you were a Christian instead of a Muslim, would you not be allowed to question that? If you were a Scientologist, would you not be allowed to question that? Because if what he's saying is, I can't question something because it's against my religion or because my religion says so, then his model of how to operate in reality says, whatever one begins to believe um, on the subject of religion, that can no longer be questioned. And what you can demonstrate that if, if Islam is true and he were a Christian mm-hmm. and he were mm-hmm. to say that he's not allowed to question things because he's a Christian, then he would be believing in the wrong religion and he would have no way to find out that he was wrong because he's not allowed to question it because he's a Christian. And the same has to be true yeah. if he's a Muslim and let's say Christianity is right, but but Islam keeps him from questioning Islam so that he can never have any way to figure out that Christianity is the right one. Once you get that dichotomy set up to show mm-hmm. that the only way to have confidence that you are believing something that is true is if you question it. And if the answers that you get are 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 um, supportive of that position exclusively and exhaustively. Um, I think that is maybe one key thing to address to, to to because that at least tries to get him to give himself permission to question the very things he's not willing to question, and it's going to mm-hmm. be incredibly uncomfortable. I have watched people who are terrified of questioning things about mm-hmm. reality when they first start to do it. They they get an overwhelming feeling that there is no truth. There is no past to truth. Um, I can't trust anything. I can't trust anyone. Um, they, they dip into nihilism. Um, they dip into everybody's lying and they tend to lean towards conspiracy theories because they began with a, an authoritarian top down view of here is your religion. Do not question it. And so, because that puts them in reliance on particular authorities, whether it's an imam or a priest or whatever else. Similarly, when they start talking about things like the shape of the earth and other things, they're just going to accept that you can't trust the government. You can't trust the scientist. You can't trust all of these things that may or may not be trustworthy are written off as untrustworthy because they conflict with the person's religion. And so getting him to to give himself permission to ask the questions it is, I think, going to be essential. Totally agree. Becca, okay. I think we've given think you a lot to think about. Times I can do. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for calling in. We, uh, 
We definitely want to hear how the conversations go. Thanks, Becca. Just one thing, please. One sure. thing, please, I don't yes. understand. Sure. Um, Matt, Matt mm-hmm. just for later on, um, can you mention the name you mentioned about um, videos to watch about flat, debunking flat earth? I didn't get yeah. his name properly. Simon Dan, S C I M A N D A N. And okay, the, and the other one good. was. Thank you very much for your the other time. One, Thanks, Becca. The other one was Conspiracy Cats, which I think yep. is Cats with a Z. It is. Uh, yeah. I did a podcast with both of them a while ago. They're both great guys. Um, yeah. Should be, should be very helpful. Thank you very, very, very much. And good luck with everything. And thank you for what you do, both of you. Yep. Thanks, oh, Becca. Thank you so much, Becca. Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of the unpleasant part of being a part of a f- religion that whose fundamentalism demands you accept bogus stuff. Uh, I mean, even still in mainstream Mormonism, to be a mainstream Mormon, you still have to believe in a literal Adam and Eve. To be, uh, uh, you still have to believe in the literal global flood, even though public facing, they will try some apologetics with it. But the moment you go into the temple and you hear the account of the creation of the world and then what followed, uh, they, there's no real way around it. And to be a part of, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's a local thing or what, what, which part of Islam her husband is hailing from to then go also, I have to believe in flat earth on that basis is unfortunate. And yeah. hopefully he will live long enough to be ashamed that he ever felt that way. Like I do about a lot of my things. Uh, have you seen the poll more recently? I have not seen the poll more recently. It's worse than last. It's worse than the atheist, theist third option where we were averaging seven to 8%. We keep going nine to 10%. And now more than a thousand, more than a hundred people are wrong on uh, this third option concept. All right. Well, uh, I did open, so we lost one of our theist callers. We still have one theist waiting on the line. I did open lines for just theists. We'll take additional theist calls if they show up. Uh, but otherwise, we're now talking to Adam in North Carolina. Adam in North Carolina, you are on the line, and you think that you can defend agnosticism in a way that will change Matt's mind in five minutes. I've started the clock. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Sure can. I do think you're also, you might also have been clipping there for a second, so you may want to move the mic away a little bit. We'll do moved a little further away for you. Perfect. Thank you. So I want to say that whatever labels anyone uses, I'm not going to tell them they aren't those labels. I think it's very inappropriate to say you're not this label. So personally, I don't, I would never define myself as an agnostic atheist. And when it comes to Wait, Adam, Matt real quick. Heaven. Adam, real quick. Are you saying universally you don't tell people they aren't allowed to use, you wouldn't tell a person that a label is not correct for them? Or are we just correct. talking about amongst agnosticism, theism, and everything? If someone says to me, I'm an agnostic atheist, I won't say that doesn't exist. Now, I think it's incoherent. I, and I, I probably wouldn't even tell Adam, them my that. question is universally, okay. do you say it's you find it wrong no matter what the label is? So let's say it's gender labels, oh, yeah. human. If someone Correct. says, no, I'm not a human, I'm a so wolf. If you I would say well, I'm Jewish, yeah. if I say I'm Jewish and I'm not. Then I would probably say, I think you're mislabeling yourself. I do agree with that. Okay. So it's semantics okay. basically. Yeah. So I, I can agree with that. Fine. All right. And then before, and then it says you can change Matt's mind before you change Matt's mind. I would like, if, if you would in just a sentence, say the position you think Matt has now that will be changed. So I think Matt goes by a colloquial definition. I'd like to change his mind that the philosophical definitions are coherent. That when Uh, somebody says there is a, I want Matt to acknowledge there is a third position if we use philosophical definitions. Uh, uh, Definition, no, there's a definition for, okay, when you say Matt's definition, I don't even know what, what word you're talking about. I think agnosticism, right? Is it, are we talking yes. about agnosticism? Theism, atheism, agnosticism. Okay. Theism and atheism uh, address belief. Gnosticism addresses knowledge. And so what I'd like to point out is back a long time ago, I think it was uh, Dawkins came up with a scale, or maybe it was Hitchens, 
the one Dawkins to seven. Dawkins scale is, is broken. Dawkins scale yeah. is ridiculous and broken and, and betrays a misunderstanding about epistemology, but go ahead. Well, and so let me, the way you're using the knowledge claim is more of a gradient as a position of confidence. When you talk about, you know, someone saying they really, really believe and they're calling that knowledge, it's not a binary anymore like JTB, justified true belief. It's more of a gradient. That's not a binary like either. Confidence. Go ahead. That's not a binary either, but go ahead. Well, something is true or not true. And I, I want to appreciate that you put theism or not theism. That is a true dichotomy. So anyone saying there's a third option to that is wrong. That's just flat out okay. wrong. Okay. Okay. Then, then we're done because well, no, but, but I'm that's not how I define I, no, agnosticism. Stop. I was in the middle of a fucking sentence. Sorry. If you agree with me that there's no middle position between theism and non-theism, and I'm saying that the way I'm using the atheism label is equivalent to, at a minimum, non-theism, then we agree that there's no middle ground between theism and atheism as we're using the term. That's the whole reason I did the poll again with not a theist. So what am I wrong Can I about? You, okay. Can I maybe convince you that the way I'm using it allows for a third position? Like, can I tell you the way I use a it? Third position, a third position between what? A and not A? The way I use it, so I'll, I'll give you how I use it here. Well, use I what? Use, use what? the word okay, atheism. Pause, pause, and pause, pause Adam, pause. Pause, pause, Adam. I really want to get this, but it's so fucking frustrating to talk about how I use the word when we, di we don't know what word you're, you're talking about and when we already agree that there's theism and non-theism, okay? And when I said, what am I wrong about? And you're like, let me give you the definition where there's a third option. A third option between A and not A was my question. There's no third option there. Okay, then there is no third option. But because I can show what you you're, how because no, because what you would have to be doing then is a third. There's proposition A, proposition X, and then you can have different positions about proposition A and different positions about proposition X. But that's not about and a single proposition. Propositional logic is about a single proposition. Some God exists. Theism is the acceptance of that proposition. Non theism is the rejection of that proposition. What definition do you have where there's magically a third option? Thank you. And I will not try to interrupt you, I promise. So the way I defined atheism is one who evaluates the proposition of God, so it's the proposition of God, and evaluates it as true. Atheism as one who evaluates the proposition of God and evaluates it as not true. Agnosticism is one who attempts to evaluate the proposition of God and fails to evaluate the proposition of God. So it's, it's a meta position on the ability to evaluate the proposition. No. So there's a proposition. Some God exists. Theism are, is the position of, of evaluating that proposition as true. Atheism is the, the position of evaluating that proposition as not true. There is no middle ground between A and not A, and there is no middle ground between true and not true. That okay, is a direct so logic. That, that is a direct logical negation. A and not A, there's no middle ground. True and not true, there's no middle ground. There, is, there can be a third option between true and false, which may have something to do with whether or not the truth value can be assessed, if we're talking about the proposition, some God exists, or the proposition God exists, which is what you were talking about, then either one accepts that proposition or one does not accept that proposition. What's the third option? The way you said it right there is you evaluate it as true or not true. So there's a jar of pennies in my room, and it is a fact of the world that that jar of pennies has either an even or odd number. So the proposition of the pennies are odd in my room there's a fact ontologically that it's true or not true, but I would state that we don't have the epistemic warrant. Well, I might, but you probably don't have the epistemic warrant to know if it's true or make a value judgment on that to come to a you belief You are conflating. State. Oh, go ahead. So the number of pennies is either odd or even, but the proposition is the number of pennies is even. 
if someone accepts that that is true, they're a theist, an evenist. If someone does not accept that that is true, or accepts that this is not true, not demonstrably true, that does not mean that they are convinced that the number of pennies is odd. Correct. So there's no middle ground. You are either convinced that the number is even, or you are not convinced that the number is even. And I think there are those, in my worldview, there are those who evaluate and say, I have come to a belief state that it's even or not even, theist or atheist. And then though, there are those who say, I cannot evaluate the pennies, I remain agnostic. No, you're, you, no, 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 no. People who evaluate that God either exists or doesn't exist are correct. But God, atheism is not equivalent to God does not exist. You just did an equivocation fallacy. You shifted from you think there are people who look at the issue of God and determine that it's either theism or atheism, but I don't, can't make up my mind. And what you did in that instance is say, those people who have, who have evaluated the God proposition have concluded that either God exists or God does not exist, and they can't tell between those two, and they, you equated theism to God exists and atheism to God does not exist. And that's not fucking atheism, as I've defined it over and over and over again. It's either theism well, or non-theism, period. Well, Matt, I think I do agree with you on one thing. It's either theism or non-theism. Totally agree with you there. I took eight minutes and 45 seconds of your time. I really wish the no, 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 no had ended in you're done and you just hung up on me. Adam, real but, quick, uh, I'm going to try and save your proposition. Can I? Go ahead. Oh, Here's how I would try and save your proposition, Adam. I think the closest I can get to something that, we w that I could agree with is if your proposition was many people will think a third option is warranted because of an experience in a philosophy class or philosophy environment <laughs> where either because of the failure of the professor or their failure to understand the topic at hand, they came away with the, uh, uh, the misgiving that there are three options. Well, if, if Matt wants to go uh, hunt down Graham Oppie, not literally, he can... Um Give him an earful and, and tell Graham Oppie to stop polluting my mind. But I appreciate the okay. time today. Graham, stop polluting his mind. <laughs> because uh, Graham Oppie can call in if he wants and try to defend this nonsense as well. Here's the thing. If you draw it out, if you draw a fucking Venn diagram, all of the problems go away. Every problem that we've got here, everything that Adam just tried to do, is a problem with equivocation fallacies in language. Adam shifted from a proposition, no God exists, to equating that to atheism or non-theism, or saying that atheism is only this. Well, I've already defined when I say theism or atheism that I'm talking about theism or non-theism. That is the minimal weak point of atheism. An atheist might also accept the proposition that no God exists, but that's not a requirement, nor is it the normative. Um, th th this, it, does Graham Oppie say that atheism is and only is the acceptance of the proposition no God exists? No, he doesn't. Then I don't see how Graham even disagrees with me, because... And, and, and there are people out there that do that. I'm sure Adam's run across them. There's lots of people arguing about the definitions. And there are people say, who say no, and mostly it's Christians, who say, oh, Matt, you're not an atheist because an atheist is someone who says there's absolutely certain that there's no God. Um, you're an agnostic. And then I've got to correct them on three bits of stupidity of misdefining atheism, of asserting that they are the ones who are going to be right about an atheist. What if I told them you're not a Christian because a Christian is somebody who believes, you know, this? Uh, it, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, oh, then, look, somebody in chat and... said that... Somebody mm -hmm. in chat said I was very rude to perfect Dawa. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Thank you, everyone, Adam. Right? Thank well, you. We had a good there talk. Bye, guys. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Uh, were you more rude than me who banned him completely from the channel and has actually now gone out of my way to say to everyone who works here, while I will not tell you, you must not, I will ask you as a favor to me to never engage Perfect Dawa until he takes down our intellectual property off of his channel? Yeah. I, I want to take this next one because I actually saw the, the, the question and I have what I think is, is a perfect way to address it. Cool. So. Let's do it. 
Alex in Pennsylvania, pronouns he him. Uh, Alex is a weak theist, and and we may or may not get into that. I don't want to necessarily put Alex on the spot, but Alex has a question, and if you ask the question exactly as it's written down here, uh, I will love you and answer you. After you remove the source of the echo from the background, ask your question. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question was, uh, why do I have to pick between the two? Outstanding question. And the answer is, you are not picking between two of anything. You are either convinced of a single proposition or you are not convinced. The proposition is, some God exists. And you are either convinced or you're not convinced. And it's not a result of you picking. Um, you are just convinced or you're not. That's it. Right. So, like, I wouldn't say I'm convinced that there's, like, a higher power or something like that. But okay. I do I have, like... I feel like it's definitely possible, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Well, I don't know how you concluded that it's possible, but I would be very surprised. I don't, I'm not convinced it's possible. I would be very surprised if there was a God. Um, but before we dip into that, did, did you get the answer to your question about choosing between two? Um, yeah, you're just saying... Am I convinced of the proposition or not? That's yeah, this. it's just the same thing as when, when we when we put someone on trial for, let's say, murder. Um, the burden of proof is on those claiming that this person killed someone or murdered someone. Um, they don't have to prove their innocence. Similarly, the proposition is that God is guilty of existing, and you don't have to prove that there's not a God. So the burden of proof is on the claim that a God exists. And you can be convinced that that claim has met its burden of proof, in which case you're a theist, and you can be unconvinced, or you can be convinced it hasn't met its burden of proof, in which case you're a non-theist, atheist, however you want to use the thing. So you're not picking between two. Nobody's saying, oh, either there's a God or there's not a God, you have to pick one. That's not the case. Nobody ever has to pick anything. And what you're convinced of, what you believe, isn't the result of an act of volition. And so all we're saying is, for the proposition some God exist, just like the proposition vaccines cause autism, just like the proposition man, humans landed on the moon, you are either convinced of those propositions or you are not. Alex, I bet your reluctance also falls into basically distinctions between that which is prescriptive and that which is descriptive, and we're merely trying to be descriptive. We're not trying to tell you you're an atheist, therefore you don't believe in God. We're trying to tell you you don't believe in God, therefore the thing that describes that is the term atheist. But I'm definitely interested in why you think it's possible that a God exists and why it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah, I think, um, so I don't, like, there's no hard evidence to me, like, proving there's a higher power or anything like that. I just think like um, when I look at, you know, how beautiful the world is and how complex things are and just my life experience, it leaves me open to the possibility that there is a higher power. Doing what? Wait, wait, wait. You just said when you, okay. So you see, see how complex things are. How would a higher power affect the complexity? You see how things are beautiful. What would the higher power's involvement with its beauty be? And then your personal life experience, what was the higher power doing in your personal life? You gave me three, so I'm sorry to ask you three in a row. We could start with you, when you see personal things in your life, that points you to a higher power being possible or that it wouldn't surprise you or maybe you just want it to be there. So tell me some something about this personal experience that points you that way. Uh, I would just say like, like the love I have for certain people and the connection I have with others. So your your love and your connection feels so intense, I suppose, that you feel like it must exist in some way outside of hormones and and neurons firing and uh, a, a physiological reaction isn't adequate enough 
to explain it to you or that it, it feels inadequate enough to explain it to you, correct? Yeah, probably more the second. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So now let's go to, and, and I'm, I'm going to do all three and I have one word in my head and I bet you all three come down to the same word. So tell me about the complexity in, in God's uh, yeah, involvement. Looking, yeah. I mean, just looking at the natural world, like, you know, outer space and then all, all the biology and the earth mm-hmm. uh, leads me. It doesn't necessarily lead me to think that there's something greater behind it. There could or could not be, but I surely wouldn't be surprised if there was. Right. So the distance between your understanding or your ability to create something as advanced as the universe and biology and the fact that those things exist leave you to believe or it get, put you in a position of going, sure, seems like something bigger could be afoot, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, so we just done complexity and we just done personal experience. So let's do beauty. Same thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Literally. So it's just, there are things that are so beautiful that put me into such a state, such a large amount of feeling, and, and I don't even necessarily feel I'm capable of feeling how much I should feel in reaction to the amount of beauty there is, right? Yeah, similar. Cool. Yeah. The word is incredulity, my friend. You have just described three instances of I am incredulous. My perception of everything is so far from what exists that I am incredulous that it could exist without something greater than me to understand it and to conceive of it. And by the way, that's fine. I'm also a bit incredulous, just not toward a God. I think there are probably explanations of why I find things beautiful that would blow my mind that I don't know yet. I think there are explanations of why things appear complex that would blow my mind because I don't know, because I don't know them yet, or maybe even humanity doesn't know all of these things yet. And, and the same thing with personal experience. But your own personal incredulity, and it's actually a fallacy called an argument from incredulity, the idea of I can't conceive of it, therefore proposition, is an argument from incredulity, and that's not a good reason to even suspect. Why is your suspicion, or you wouldn't be surprised that there is a God higher up than you wouldn't be surprised that your brain is limited? Because that's mine. My incredulity goes, I'm stupid. I'm not calling you stupid. Uh, But relative to all of these things, I'm quite stupid. Uh, And and. Yeah, sorry, go on. No, it's the same point that I was going to make, only slightly different. So th- this should dovetail together and maybe give you a chance to add. If you just take anything that you talked about, like your experience of love for people, um, f- for you, it seems incomprehensible that you could feel love in the way you feel love unless there was some higher power that served as an explanation for this love. And... Maybe that's true, but you, you we would all have to recognize that it might also be true that that's just what your brain thinks and you're wrong. And so the key thing is, how do I tell the difference between being wrong about what it's like to experience love and what's required for me to experience love and being right about it? And if so, what's the mechanism by which I can look at love and say, you know what, my suspicion is that there has to be a God based on this. How do you go from that to here's how I can test and show that, um, that it's more likely that there's a God than that I'm wrong. I don't think there's really a way for me to determine either way. Well, if there's no way to determine, then how can you think that it's possible or likely? I guess for me, it's like I, I am very like weak in the sense of what I think. Like I'm not super convinced. So like my my as you mentioned before earlier, like my confidence level is low on it. Yeah, but how can you have any confidence level if you have no way of telling the difference between being right and wrong? How can you possibly have any confidence level? Is 
it's just based on my like feeling and perception. It's not totally okay. like rational. Very honest. I, I, I appreciate that. Then let me ask you this. Do you care whether or not your beliefs are true? Yeah, I, I do care. That's why, but I think for me, like I get concerned when people have really hard beliefs on this stuff. Like I definitely can see like agnostic atheism as like, I, it definitely makes sense to me, but, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess for me, it's, it's like, I feel like I share a lot of similarities with what you guys think. It's just like, well, if you had to ask me or, well, if I had to make a decision on what, what I think, I would say, well, I think there's definitely a possibility. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, but, okay, I, I don't know how to conclude that there is a possibility of a God at all. And every time I ask someone, they don't seem to know either, and yet they're the ones claiming it's possible or it seems yeah. possible. And when I ask... How can it seem possible? How can you reach that conclusion about possibility without a mechanism that allows for that? And nobody to date has had an answer for that. Yeah, Alex, I, I'm sorry I keep doing this to people, but I'm trying yeah. to save people's phrases and propositions all day. Is it that you think it's possible or is it that you want it to be possible because some grand magical explanation would be wonderful in, in, in your eyes? Mm. Um, I think for me, I just want to do what is actually true. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's uh, comfortable for me or not. So probably the first thing. So, said. so then maybe, maybe Alex, is it when you say, I think it's possible are you mistaking the position I think it's possible for the position I haven't ruled it out as impossible? Yeah. If I, I tell you there's a distinction, do you already know what it is or do you need, uh, uh, do you want to walk through it a little bit? Uh, well, I think that, yeah, I haven't ruled out that it's impossible. Yeah, that's definitely the case. And, and you understand that that's right. technically different than it's possible but maybe that's what you meant when you were saying it's possible, or do you not see them as different? I'm having trouble seeing the difference. Cool. Matt does this one already perfectly. So I'll let you, you have a, you have your, is it possible? Is it impossible thing? I assume you know what I'm referring to. I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what you're referring to. Okay. I, I'll, I'll try and do a version of it. Uh, basically fail. Whether you is something possible merely because it has not oh. been shown to be impossible. I think that's the right phrasing. Yeah. Now Matt has it, so I'm going to let him take it back. But this is the question to you. Is something possible merely because it hasn't been shown to be impossible, Alex? Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So <laughs> I haven't I haven't shown that it's has it been demonstrated that it is, well, is it possible for me to flap my arms and fly to the moon? No. How do you know that? How did you demonstrate that it's impossible? Um, because I assume that you are a human like I am, so, and we should have the same. Okay, so know, first ability. of all, you, you don't know that, and you haven't investigated every human, how do you know that it's impossible for any human to do that? Uh, just pra like I'm pretty confident about it. Just practically. Well, I didn't speaking. ask about pretty confident. It, this is about possible versus impossible. And you're saying that something's possible because it hasn't been shown to be impossible. And, and what I'm trying to show is that you make decisions all the time about what's possible and they're not tied to whether or not you can actually demonstrate impossibility. Similarly, something isn't impossible merely because you haven't shown that it's possible. So you're, you're beginning with this thing. This <laughs> yeah. You're beginning with this thing. That's basically, Hey, nobody has ever proved there's not a God. And that means there could be a God, but that's not true because at some point 
in the in the past, nobody had proven anything. Exactly. Some point back in history, like go back to the to the very dawn of human beings before we have any concepts. Um, had anybody proven that flapping your arms won't get you to the moon? No. Nobody's proven that proven that's impossible at all. And yet at that moment, it was still either possible or impossible, right? I'm going to have to think about this. Sorry. I, 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 <laughs let me try, let me try with, let me try just switching the metaphor and see if this helps you. Uh, Alex, is it possible that the earth is flat? No. Okay. Before 500 years ago, or what, pick whatever date. Let's say, let's go back 5,000 years. 5,000 years ago, did we have proof that the earth was round? No. Oh, actually, no. no. 5,000 years ago, was it possible that the earth was flat? No. Right. But so no was, one was had it demonstrated ever, it. Was it ever possible that the earth was flat? No. Cool. So whether or not the earth is flat, whether or not it's possible that the earth is flat is not contingent on demonstrating that it's not impossible, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. That's there all we, we were saying. There you go, Alex. I knew, it, I, I knew there was something that we just had to, uh, uh, okay. that there was some little block in there that we just had to swat it away and you'd have it. If all you ever want to do is say, Hey, I'm not saying it's impossible for there to be a God. Cool. Uh, right. I don't know how to. Oh, okay. I don't know how to demonstrate. Pick pick a god. I don't know how to demonstrate that it's possible for that god to exist, and I may not know how to demonstrate that it's impossible for that god to exist. Um, but then I'm in a position where I just don't know whether or not it's possible, whether or not it's impossible. And the fact is, in in for any given situation, possibility needs to be demonstrated, and or impossibility needs to be demonstrated um by the way i think i don't want to add confusion but i think you're wrong uh, about whether or not it's possible for the earth to be flat but that's a logical possibility that has nothing to do with reality yeah i mean i guess that's just easy to demonstrate i mean but yeah yeah it's easy to dem easier to demonstrate i guess Okay. Yeah. yeah. Alex, cool. All right. Let's well, wrap up the call. And then I want to ask, I, I, I'm going to ask a clarifying question on that. Ask, but thank you, Alex, for calling in uh, and let yeah, us know what, you guys. where things go. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Take thanks. it easy. Will you restate that? You think it is wrong to assert that it is, sorry, go on. If the thing you said about the earth being round just now. You asked if it was possible for the earth to be flat. And my answer is, I don't know. Don't know if it's possible for the earth to be flat. I, I don't know because uh -huh. the possibility, it's never been demonstrated that it's possible for the earth to be flat. I don't mean that its current form is flat. No, I know that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about possible worlds in which the earth is flat. And so, so would that be amended if we just start adding more information to it like yeah you don't okay so like that it's it, the earth is in a solar system um which is a, there's a part difference of it. between there's a difference between logical possibility and epistemic or empirical possibility logical possibility and this is a i think a big mistake which i fought against many many times but logical basically something is logically possible as long as it hasn't been shown to be impossible mm. and so within logic basically that's where you get this anything is possible you haven't shown that there's not some possible fanciful world with it you, you'll never a lot a married bachelor is impossible it, it, mm -hmm. it is a contradiction um a universe where the sun orbits the earth is logically possible it's just not the actual state of affairs and whether or not it is uh, empirically possible or impossible would require a continued discussion down that path. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. 
Yeah. I, I, it's not we, the case. It would go too long because now I want to put in clarifiers of like, so then what if I use the phrase our earth and then we define, define our to mean present state our earth, earth yeah. is our earth is not flat right is there some set of circumstances under which our earth could be flat i don't know like yes for, for example if you take it out of the space of euclidean geometry right uh the same earth you know may not it, it definitely doesn't look like a spheroid if you do that but, That's but, so interesting i shouldn't i shouldn't even have said it because we finally got the guy to, to understand what we were yeah. saying it's just, I, I didn't want, I, we, we ask a question like, is X possible? And then he's like, nope, that's not possible. And, and we just run with it because it's gotten us to, yes, this person understands the concept of possibility and impossibility. We just need to focus on it. Right. Logical possibility is a pain in the pain in the ass. And, and most of the time it's not anything I give a crap about. Yeah. Yeah. I like a you. multiverse. Yeah. Uh, though fun to think about, especially when you're high. Yeah. Um, I am going to let this one more call through. Uh, they had sent a sizable super chat actually. And so the funny thing is as we bring you on Joel, uh, because I knew we had a little bit of room and you sent it quite a nice super chat. I was actually still planning Thank to you. read yours. Uh, however, let's go ahead and ask the question since we got you anyway. Yeah. See what oh, we amazing. Yeah. But first time caller and a long time listener, like, uh, they say in the movies, I'm, uh, I'm very, uh, very happy to talk to you guys. Matt, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of yours. Uh, you actually really helped me express my atheism to all my friends and uh, colleagues and family. And uh, first of all, really thank you for that. I've been watching you for years. And uh, well, thanks, my you question... Ah, you're welcome. Uh, my question is, uh, well, uh, as I said in the Super Chat, I'm, uh, I'm calling from Israel. And uh, I've been living here for 25 years now, and more and more, and I even want to say exponentially almost, religion start taking a big, big piece of uh, the daily lives of all Israelis. And that's something that's really worried me. And uh, when I try to, to talk about that and uh, try... Uh, we've just lost... Joel's oh, man. audio. Let, well, let me read the super chat Joel had sent and see if this helps. I'll leave it connected in case uh, Joel comes back in. But the super chat had read, hi, guys, great show. Do you have uh, any very good argument for the separation of church and state in my country, Israel? All this while knowing that the population growth of ultra-Orthodox Jews here is really, really high, already 30% of the population. Exactly. Oh, hey, good. We're back. Got you back, Joel. Oh, I'm back. Yep. Nice. So, yeah, this is basically my, my question. And more than that, like I said, it, if it was just this and, you know, religion was uh, in the private domain or m more of a cultural thing, no, now it really becomes, it's starting to become rules that affect people who don't want to have anything to do with it, basically. Mm -hmm. You want to go first, Matt? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, basically, Joel wants, to, uh, Joel wants to argue on behalf of separation of church and state and be armed with a couple of good bits. Well, it's going to be incredibly difficult once you're already talking to a state that has a state religion. Yeah. Because uh, most of the arguments are for separation of church and state are about, hey, what if the state decides to implement a religion that isn't yours? Exactly. What if you're all of a sudden forced to follow somebody else's religion? Um, the biggest appeal that you can make is to say, look, um, freedom of religion allows everyone to follow the dictates of their conscience. It means that if you want to be Reformed Jew, you are. If you want to be conservative Jew, you are. If you want to be Orthodox Jew, you are. If you want to be a Muslim, you are. If you want to be a Hindu, you are. If You're free to do all of these. And so it maximizes individual liberty and now it reduces um oppression because if yeah. i want to be an atheist in israel now granted my understanding is that like 51 percent of jews in, in israel are already atheist or secular 
Um, that's the just, that's the problem. It used to be, and you are correct. And ten years ago, I would never have called with this question. And now it's become less and less where we are on the verge of becoming becoming the, the minority, the liberal people. Because some people are traditionalist, a lot of people are traditionalist here, but less and less. And we are becoming the minority. And uh, those arguments that you gave me that are, are amazing. It's just that it seems that in the higher place of state, they are uh, deaf to it. They, they just don't hear the logic in that. And it's very worrying. Well. I've been doing this for 20 years and uh, I'm constantly frustrated that it uh, the people don't listen, that they're yeah. not convinced that um, that in many cases we seem to be going backwards. I don't know that there's um, I don't know that there's anything else to say other than to continue uh, making the arguments and continue working towards, you know, here, let me let me depress you further. The okay. other day, <laughs> the other day, CNN decided to uh, host basically a Donald Trump rally. Yeah. They put him on a okay. stage, gave him live TV, um, and planted in the room a few hundred people who were already supporters or leaning towards supporting. Uh, the Republican Party, and possibly Donald Trump. And he sat mm -hmm. there and he spewed lies about the election, which we all knew he was going to do. Anybody with any sense could have predicted this. The host spent, um, briefly, I, I, I it's very hard for me to give her too much of a hard time over this because I understand you're on stage with a former United States president um, if yeah. you push back too hard, you end up looking like an asshole. Um, no matter how right you are, you can just end up looking awful. And so while she pushed back on a couple of things that he said, I don't think she pushed back anywhere near hard enough. And so what ended up happening? Well, all the people who already believed his nonsense keep believing it. All the people mm -hmm. who, who were on the fence uh, in that audience... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, got to sit there and watch someone spew information, appear to be challenged briefly, and then wave that off while the other people sitting in the audience laughed and applauded. Mm. This well, wasn't... This really reminds Donald, me, yeah, it's, um, it's exactly Trump the same. You're completely correct. Is one of the stupidest people I've ever seen He's one of the most dishonest people who's ever been president, let alone run for president. He is not in touch with reality. And I hear myself echoing back. But no, no. that was my fault. Sorry. Oh, but to top it all off. This is someone who in a sane world, like if you told me 15 years ago, we that our country would be in the position it's in where we would have overturned Roe v. Wade, where the Supreme Court would have been stacked because Donald Trump was president, was unchallenged, and was I know something doing what about could. the Supreme Court. We have the exact same thing here happening right now. So, yeah, exactly. But if you'd have told me 10 or 15 years ago, I would have said you were nuts. And so every mm -hmm. day I wake up in a world that makes no sense. And <laughs> so while I'd love to tell you how to fix Israel, I don't even know how to fix my country, and we already have, or are supposed to have, freedom of religion. I don't know how mm -hmm. to implement. I, I think maybe the it may be backfiring because if you walked in right now and tried to convince your, your prime minister that he should advocate mm -hmm. for freedom of religion, if I were the prime minister, I would say, "Why would I want anything that the United States has?" Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Well, I'm always taking the, the French uh, example and what happened in the in the 18th century, the, the revolution, and when they decided to uh, divide the church and the and the state and and their argument. But uh, bottom line, uh, I'm uh, like you said, I'm really uh, I think we we lost already, and uh, this is kind of sad. But I tend to agree with uh, this is what I thought that you guys uh, were gonna say. And uh, yeah, Joel, I'll give you uh, I'll give you one quick 
minor philosophical argument you can make if you like it or not. Uh, I think everything yeah, Matt just said is good. But if I was talking to somebody one on one and I wanted to mm-hmm. appeal to them more from an emotional or a philosophical yes, point of yes. view. Uh, by the way, yeah. just one second. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, I'm not calling here with some uh, delusions that I'm sure. going to change, go into politics or something. No, I'm talking a lot on the street to people. Uh, who are uh, missionaries for the religion, and I'm trying, and I'm using all the arguments I learned from you, Matt, by the way, and they're just, sure. they don't know what to answer. And they, Sure, Joel, they, let me finish mine, though. Come on, man. Ah, sorry. sorry yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, so mine was going to be, if you want a slightly, a, a slightly philosophical something, you can appeal to the thing. Uh, as far as freedom of religion goes, one of the reasons to advocate for it is the limitation of the authentic, on the authenticity of your belief if you don't have it. In other words... If you mm. truly, what type of belief is a belief that you don't have a choice without? In other words, your your Judaism, your Christianity or whatever, the authenticity of your belief will be limited by the fact that you have an authoritarian dictation of what that belief has to be or where you have to behave. And so a person who is a Christian who actually has the option to not be a Christian is living more authentically as a Christian than a person who is a Christian and must be a Christian. That would be mm-hmm. the somewhat philosophical uh, uh, approach you could take if you wanted to. Well, um, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thanks so much, Joel. Mm. We did have one more. Um, we've got the time if you're down for it. We had one more theist just call in. Be our last call of the day. I'm in favor. Yeah, it's kind of how I am too. I'd probably go all night if there wasn't a time conflict, if there was always the I online. have a few things to do with regard to snakes and rats and prep for tomorrow, but sure. Uh, Billy in Austin. So we could have done this at the coffee shop if we had wanted Billy in Austin, you are on the line. How are you doing? Just fine. How are you? Cool. Doing pretty good. Good, good. Well, the floor is yours. Ask away. Um, well, I just want to ask, uh, is is the response I don't know always an acceptable answer? If that's the cur- if it's true, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, how but how would you know if it's true if, if you don't know? Well, I mean, I guess no, no, no. no. If the person who is responding I don't oh, know okay. is being right, right. honest, then. It would always not, I can't think of a time it wouldn't be appropriate to say, I don't know. It doesn't mean that if you're asking a question that an answer should, uh, you know, be provided for like, Hey, is there a tornado outside? I don't know, but now I can go find out, uh, would be, you don't have to limit yourself to, I don't know. Therefore I'm never going to know. But if the honest response is, I don't know, then that would be the appropriate time to respond with, I don't know. Okay. Um, one more quick question. Can you be ignorant about knowledge that is not available? Like, can you be, can I be ignorant of leprechaun genetics? Uh, I mean, does, does my lack of that knowledge make me ignorant? Or, or knowledge that's just not available at all? Can you be ignorant if you, if you lack that knowledge? I, I think I get what or, you're saying. You, and I think you're, you're inviting us by to definition, a, ignorance is a yeah. lack of knowledge, but right. Um, it's kind of like a pointless difference to say, I am ignorant about leprechaun genetics. Right. Okay. I, I am technically ignorant about leprechaun genetics, but until um, until there's someone who's not ignorant about leprechaun genetics, I don't think it matters. Does that make sense? Right. But yeah. yeah um, Cause I'm, I'm thinking if, could you, could you effectively call somebody ignorant about knowledge that they're, that they have that they do not have access to not that that knowledge doesn't really exist but they that knowledge is unavailable to them are they still ignorant if they if they lack that knowledge not because well, I'm thinking yeah, of yes like, they're both, they're, yes sorry. but not not in a useful sense so this kind of relates loosely to can babies be atheists right and so if, if you define atheism as anyone who is not convinced that a God exists, babies, as far as we can tell, aren't convinced that a God exists. They could be, I, you know, we're not going to get into that right now. Um, but right. the fact that if in fact a baby is not convinced that a God exists, it's not because 
it is because they do not have the ability to even process the proposition or evaluate it. And so similarly, right, saying right. someone is ignorant of leprechaun genetics is factually true. And I mean, it, first of all, I don't view ignorance as a slight in the first place. I, I know you weren't suggesting that was necessarily the case, but to say, can you say that someone is ignorant of something that they don't have access to? Yes, you absolutely can, both in the sense of you can say whatever the hell you want, and it would be fair to say that someone is ignorant of this information. And when they point out that everyone is apparently ignorant of this information or that they don't have access to it, they are also correct. I think, right. the, Billy, I think what you're really trying to ask is, would you be justified in extending it as a pejorative? Uh, and no. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's kind of some some of it. But but then I'm thinking if if that was the case, then everybody is ignorant is is infinitely ignorant to a unlimited amount of imaginary knowledge that you know you could say that everybody is ignorant of. Which is why uh, Matt emphasized you know, like, it's not useful. Right. Yeah. Right, I mean, right, right. Right. all of us are ignorant <coughs> about a great many things. <laughs> <laughs> Very sorry about this. I got something stuck in oh, my throat. Yeah. All of us are ignorant about a great many things. Some of us are ignorant about things that everyone is ignorant about. And we don't know of any way to necessarily correct that. But some of us <coughs> are ignorant <coughs> about things that the rest, that other people in the world are not. Like, yeah. I know how much money is in my wallet. You don't. You are ignorant about how much money is in my wallet. I am not. However, how much money is in my wallet is not really an issue of relevance to pretty much anybody but me right now. And right. your ignorance is not a negative trait on your part. Um, it just means there's something you don't know. I'm also right. ignorant but, about leprechaun genetics. But it feels kind of, but it feels negative though. Like whenever somebody like if sure. you told me like you're, you're, you're ignorant, uh, or yeah, maybe not. In that I get it. Tone, People but, use but it as like, a pejorative. It isn't always a pejorative. Right. I right. called myself stupid on the show earlier, which is a common pejorative. It wasn't necessarily ne meaning it pejoratively. Can I, Billy, I, can I share something I'm ignorant of that I think you're not ignorant of? And then I would like sure. you to share with me the information that fills in that gap. Um, sure. Yeah. Go for I it. am ignorant of why you believe in a God. Um, well, just to, to put a cap on the whole uh, ignorance thing, there's, there's also, um, the reason I brought it up is because there's also willful ignorance, like, um, knowledge that is available, but you lack that knowledge, um, maybe even voluntarily lack that knowledge, like you refuse to, uh, you refuse to even, um, explore it or something like that. And, and in that case, I would, I would put is the pejorative on you as in you're ignorant because you, you know, refuse to even explore certain knowledge. But, but, um, yeah, the, the reason I am a, uh, well, wait, 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 Billy, water. Billy, Billy, Sorry. I, you know, Sorry. I'm not just going to let you jump past that. Tell me what you Sorry. believe I am willfully ignorant of. Cause you said, um, I don't in response. Don't know, actually. Uh, well, you just said that in response to my question, why do you believe in God? You said it, I was willfully ignorant of something. No, implying. he didn't. I thought, no, he didn't. I thought he did. Okay, I thought that's what I was hearing. Yeah, yeah, I was not. I was not trying to. Put, um, yeah, direct that towards towards you at all. I was just trying to put it. Put the. the he was still talking about the last thing and acknowledging that there is willful ignorance. This wasn't a part of. Okay, so that wasn't a response to my question. Now, now you're responding right. to my question, right, Billy? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if we really want to get, get into it um, because it's. It's weird, but you know, I mean, I I do have reasons to believe that there's some kind of um, uh, uh, higher power type thing. I don't know. I can't. I can't really explain. I, I wouldn't even attempt to explain what it is, which is why. Uh, um, uh, let me ask you a question: Is there a difference between believing something and believing in something? Because I believe lots of stuff, but I don't believe in anything. So, I well, mean, ha I don't. It's weird that you would ask that question and then say and answer it. So, if if you're going to say that you believe lots of things but you don't believe in anything, 
then you're saying there is a difference between belief and belief in. I, I think that there is. Belief is the uh, being convinced that a proposition is true or likely true. But believe in isn't just, oh, I have confidence that this will work. Believe in also is used in a way that is completely equivalent to believe. When when I say, when, when I was a Christian for, you know, 20 some odd years. I had to step away when for a I second. When I said, I believe. I just have to step away for a second. I'm just letting you know. Okay. When, when I said, when I was a Christian and I said, I believe that Jesus is the risen Lord, I also would say, I believe in Jesus. Now, and I would say, say that in twofold. One is that I had confidence in the efficacy of, of Jesus doing things, but also in the sense of, I believe that Jesus is God. That's what it means to say believing in. As a matter of fact, if you go look up, um, a definition for believe in, I think one of the top definitions, have faith in the truth or existence of something. So uh, be of the opinion that something is right or acceptable. Now, there's a difference okay. between believe in and believe that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are a theist, you're saying you believe that a God exists and that you believe in the notion that a god exists right right um i guess that that kind of brings brings me to the i guess my answer i i think that the way i've always looked at it is um it's not the question isn't really um whether or not a god exists or maybe that's the wrong way to put it um the question is really about the existence of reality um and uh i guess in ancient times that was the actual question was was what's the explanation for reality and there was theos which is god and then there was atheos which is without god and so the the um whenever somebody was confronted with this question they would they would either have the uh, none, none of this matters the, okay billy Either either yeah. some God exists or no God exists, right? Those are the only options. Right. Okay. If you are convinced that some God exists, then you are a theist. Right. But I would, if you are well, not convinced, well, the, then you're not a theist. Right. I, but I would explore the the existence of reality and um no it would no and i would question whether or not that's no. possible without a no oh, okay. no 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 are you convinced that a god exists yes yes then you are a theist and my question yes. is why it doesn't matter you know we're talking about whether or not you're convinced that a god exists this whole thing about exploring the nature of the universe is is a bunch of hand waving nonsense. Why are you convinced that a god exists? Um, because the appearance of design in in reality, or in in um, okay, yeah, the appearance, if, if the of, appearance design. of design in reality convinces you that a god exists. How do we tell whether or not yeah. something is designed? Um, we uh, it's we explore or, or we study it, we examine it. And we uh, uh, to see what uh, measure, we 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 measure its uh, uh, you know its details and stuff like that. We we just we examine. That it. doesn't that doesn't tell me anything. Here, here's here's two things. One of them, you, you come across, a, you're walking along a river, and you see <laughs> a bunch of sticks damming up the river. How do you right. tell? whether that is the result of a storm just moving sticks around or the design of a beaver how do you tell well we we um examine what the way beavers make dams and right. then we would compare that to a you know and, and in order to do that, that to, in order to do that you would need to know that beavers exist that they build dams and you would need other beaver dams to investigate first to get the characteristics in order to compare this to, right? Not necessarily. 
I think that what? we could we could determine. I think that we could determine by the structure of the beaver dam that nature is not capable of assembling. Ah, uh, that so it, when it, I when I lead you right up to the edge of the water, like every stubborn mule, you refuse to drink and you assert something absolutely nonsensical. How on earth? How on earth can you recognize design without something to compare it to? How um, how on earth can you, you conclude? Sense. How on earth can you, you conclude that nature is not possible? It's not possible for nature to do something. Because you could, because we can make simulated models of nature that that demonstrate what what nature is capable of doing. That that doesn't demonstrate what it's not capable of. That demonstrates what it's capable of. Oh, okay, that's that's true. And and, and so so, but hang on, because this is about to get a whole lot worse. How many universes do we have to investigate? An infinite number of universes. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yes, we have we do. exactly one yes, universe to investigate. No, There's don't. only one universe no, that we have access to. No, no. We have we have simulated models of universes. No, the, I didn't use. ask. I didn't ask. I didn't ask about simulated models. I said, how many universes do we have to investigate? We have one. It doesn't. That's that's. I mean, we still have simulated models. That's how we know. I, That's I how didn't we're ask about to... simulated models. How many well, universes do we have that we can investigate? Like an infinite number. Dude, you're not getting it. No, like, we, we have, have one. We have there exists models. only one universe make... that you can actually investigate, Billy. You're wrong. Only one. You're wrong. No, you you're are wrong. fucking. No. Show me another universe right now, Billy. Show me another universe. Okay, P TNG. Look at uh, look at illustrious TNG three hundred. That's another universe that we can investigate. Illustrious and, and TNG three hundred. What the hell yes, is that? And we can. And we can ask, that's a, that's the most advanced simulated model of the universe. And it's not a real universe if it's fucking <laughs> simulated, Billy. It match, it matches, what? It what real? The, what, no, no, no. I'm asking. See, you're, now you're, not, you're not being. Now you're not being fucking honest. Now you're just being dishonest, yes, Billy. Because no, I walked not. you in no, on not. fucking design, and then I asked you how many universes there were, and now you're inventing universes that aren't real or pointing to other universes <laughs> that people have invented. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, it, Billy. I'm still talking. Dude, it matches with what we Shut see in reality. The f okay, so, I'm going to mute you, and no one will hear a word you say until I'm done talking because you're dishonest. I asked you how many universes we had to investigate. I didn't ask about simulated universes, and when you suggested them, I specifically said that I'm not interested in, nor do I care about simulated universes for the purpose of this question. And I repeatedly asked you, how many universes? But you wouldn't say one, despite the fact that you know beyond any doubt that I am specifically asking about how many real, physical, fucking universes can we investigate? And so I'm going to ask you again, Billy, how many real physical fucking universes can we investigate? Uh, that's a fucking obvious question, dude. There's only the real universe that we fucking live. Good. Now I'm muting your ass again, because now I've got you to answer one question. Honestly, within this one universe, if we want to find out if something within the universe is designed or not, how do we do that? Hello? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Within the one real universe that we inhabit, how do we tell if something is designed or not? We measure it. We examine it. We calculate Measure it for what? We what what is the, what is the criteria that demonstrates what is the criteria that demonstrates that something in reality was designed versus not designed? There's precision, specificity, cooperation. Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, dynamic, Preci uh, precision precision can occur naturally. Specificity is an inference that you can't demonstrate. Complexity is not a hallmark of design. If anything, simplicity is a hallmark of design, not complexity. You recognize design by pointing to other examples of it being designed and by showing what cannot occur naturally. Now, 
let's move this to the scope of the universe. What, what cannot, what, what cannot what happen property, naturally? That was my no, answer. listen to me. What property of the real universe must have been designed, and how did you conclude that? The genome. The genome had to be designed. Yes, the, the genome. How do you know that? The, the, the secret how do you know that? Because, how do you oh, know yeah, that? Dude, because, because simulated models demonstrate that. Goodbye. And you're going you're gonna to flip out. Goodbye. Goodbye. You, simulated, there is no simulated model that, that yes, does conclude is. or can. All right, I'm going to mute you again. There is no simulated model that does conclude or could reasonably conclude that the human genome or the genetic model in our universe needed to be designed. That is an inference that is not supported by evidence. So how else can you show it, Billy? No, uh, that, but see, that demonstrates your ignorance because there's Avida, there's Mendel's accountant, there's EVWare, there's Weasel. Okay, I'm muting you again because you don't seem to understand the problem here. The genome is descriptive. Our understanding of it has this one example. You can explore other genomes to find out in, in your simulated genomes in order to find out how this one is different. But what you can't do is say, this genome could not have occurred naturally unless you have exhaustive knowledge of the universe. Do you have exhaustive knowledge of the universe? I mean, I, I personally don't, no. Does anybody? But, but yeah. Does anybody? There's, artific there's artificial Absolutely. supercomputers. There's oh, my, you think, you think, wait, wait, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mute you. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Be very careful with this. Billy, are you saying that artificially intelligent supercomputers possess exhaustive knowledge of the real you out re reality? Uh, I'm sorry. The, the beep cut, cut off the last part of what you said. Billy, are you saying that there are artificially intelligent supercomputers that possess exhaustive knowledge of reality? Um, define exhaustive knowledge, please. Complete. No. Nothing. Then why, 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 why? When I said, "Do you possess exhaustive knowledge?" Did you say no? But then said that there are supercomputers that do. Because I, at that point, at that time, I didn't know that your definition of exhausted knowledge was meant complete knowledge. My definition no, no, of exhaustive. You just gave me your definition. It's not my fucking definition, Billy. Look it up. Exhaustive. Examining, including, or considering all elements or aspects. Fully comprehensive. That's just what the fucking word means. Don't act so, like I'm coming so, up with my own personal definitions of words. You're the one that is out there claiming that you can demonstrate something that nobody has ever demonstrated, something that we have no reason to think can be demonstrated, which is that the genome can't occur naturally when all of the evidence you, suggests that it can, and it does. Yeah. Horseshit, dude. Um, Horseshit. No, you don't have to have Goodbye, exhaustive. Billy. You Goodbye. Don't have, you don't have Goodbye. to have, have exhaustion. Goodbye. Have a nice Sunday. Billy thinks Deuce. that some extremely limited simulation has uh, overwhelmed and debunked the entire field of evolutionary biology. Well done, yeah. Billy. Uh, well there's done. a supercomputer somewhere that's run simulations of a universe, and it's concluded that the genome had to have been created by an intelligence. No, that's never, ever happened. I just, that, that is, a, that is a, an outright denial of the facts of reality. And I thought I was an AI simp. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, that's it. That's Stuck up to our computer overlords even harder there, Billy. Uh, a minute from now, the show will be beginning over on Arn Ra's channel. I'll be headed there uh, to read the Book of Mormon. This week, an amazing lineup of shows. On Monday, Arn Ra is joined by Dr. Ben, no longer student. Dr. Ben is joining Arn Ra on Skeptalk. On Tuesday, we are launching Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock. It will be episode one. That's going to be incredible. Everyone watching this, you should be there. And then you should invite like 10 people each, all of you. Anything less than 30,000 people live, I consider a failure. Sorry, I had a belch. I, I uh, agree. Yes. Um, Wednesday, 
is the hang up with Matt Dillahunty. Matt, who do you have on with you this Wednesday? Because I don't remember off the top of my head. Skeptics and Scoundrels. Skeptics and Scoundrels is joining uh, Matt this Wednesday and this Thursday, Arden, and a surprise guest, which people are starting to pick up on, means we haven't booked it yet. Arden and a surprise <laughs> guest will be on the Transatlantic Collins show. Uh, and then look forward to later this month where we are launching those new debate shows. And I think that's going to be fantastic. Anything uh, you want to share before we head over to Arden's? Nah. Um if you go over and visit, just do a quick Google search for Skeptic and Scoundrels, you'll find his channel. His name's Eric, and uh, he's only got a, a dozen or so videos up there. He's, he's fairly new to some of this, but I'm looking forward to meeting him in, and interacting and hanging out, um, and hopefully we'll get some good calls. Maybe, maybe yeah. I'm completely wrong. Maybe Billy can call back on Wednesday um, and talk to Eric, or maybe he can call on on one of the Monday and try to, to dig in with Forrest or somebody um, on how how he concluded through his AI Sims that um, the, the genome <laughs> had to have been intentionally created. Billy, if you have a camera and a mic, I would suggest that of all the calls that we've taken in the last month, you're the one I hope asks to be on NBOSS. Yeah. Uh, you, come on. You get 10 minutes uninterrupted to make your case and then face some questions and demonstrate, A, that you're right, B, that you understand this stuff way better than I do, and mm. show me up in the span of an hour. It'd be great to apply for that. Phenomenal. Awesome. Well, this has been a great time, and uh, now the credits play and, and all that sort of stuff. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. We will see you later, well, st tomorrow, back on The Line. Fair. I guess I could just actually mute myself each time. No, it's funnier, because then I can hear you. And then people are like, hey, do they know that people can hear them? Yeah, and now I can sit here and I can just go like this.